<laughs> Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to a very special long in whip and in tooth edition <laughs> of Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. We've just been sued. No, no, we're not sued. We're 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 playing. Luckily, I can't sing very well, so okay. And uh, speaking of who can't sing well, who are you, sir? <laughs> I actually am a quite fine singer, but I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. <laughs> and I'm James Gonis. <laughs> Larry also does all our Foley on the show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You're welcome, uh, Matt. I'm excited. I, You yeah. know what? This is such a strange episode. I think for all of us, especially for Sean and me, because... We we've sort of fought against this episode for the longest time. <laughs> well, kind really of. Have. I mean, kind yeah. of don't, shut up, Sean. Come on, don't leave me hanging there. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking yesterday, about, man. Yesterday, what are you? <laughs> geez, who are you? <laughs> yesterday, Sean was going over my dead body. <laughs> I, I feel really good about being here. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. We haven't introduced you yet. Here we go. So anyway, so here's the deal. I'm breaking the rules. All right, that's fine. That's, rules are made to be broken. But what? Look, Come on, so get to it. I'm getting to it, all right? So here, here we go. Now, we fought against this episode because we didn't think there was enough. But I realized that doing the research and some recent things that have come out in the theaters... Maybe this is the time. Maybe there is enough. And now I'm afraid there's too much. Mm, and so yeah. what is this topic that it's we're talking about? It's a timely topic. It's a timely topic. And that topic is Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones! Indiana Jones! Do, 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 the, do, do the firecracker. Do, do. Uh, there you go. <laughs> What, what are you riding a tom tom? What is that? <laughs> it's it's a, Indiana Jones. This these the sound effects, music, sound. action, wow. and, and you know, I'll tell you something, Matt. I'll, let me tell, tell me you something. Tell me, Larry. You know, when we were talking about doing this episode, yeah, uh-huh. we were talking about who could we possibly get? Yes, to be I remember that. We, we we need someone who knows it. Lives it, breathes it. It's right. an expert. Remember this? Yeah. Yes. And Larry, I, you know what? It was one of those things too, where the decision to do this episode almost came from the fact that we wanted to do it with this person. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Right. Exactly. And if I may, listeners, our guest tonight is not only an Indiana Jones and whip expert, but he is a creature maker, an effects artist, and also he is the maker of a six foot tall giant Aurora Frankenstein model that was seen at Monster Palooza. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to friend of Monster Party, Ted Haynes. Ted, foam fabricating legend, yes, and Monster Party benefit. Factor. That's right. Yes. Indeed. If adventure has a name, it must be Ted Haynes. <laughs> there you <laughs> That's go. That's right. That, that, that has a and, nice and, ring to it. And look, listeners, it, it, when Ted and I we, we get together, we see each other at Monster Palooza. When Ted was on the show, we talk about Raiders and Indiana Jones. We talked about this, and we couldn't think of anyone else th- to bring on the show than Ted. Because we tried. Ted, oh, God, no, did we try. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, also, Har- Harrison Ford was a little busy. <laughs> but it's also the perfect time and, because of the new film. Sean Connery was kind of busy as well. We got we yes, got a medium. Yes. But Ted said, "Look, I, I I know that you're a big fan of this. Could you More tell of us a if- fan? I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I'm an expert. Oh, in everything Indiana Jones, oh yeah. but I'm a huge fan of everything Indiana Jones. So everything. <laughs> yes, everything. Everything in anything Indiana Jones. I mean, it's like you know." Everything. It, I'm an Indiana Jones fan. Okay. okay. I, All I, right. You I, never, I, you never I'm give a up. Fan. On I'm a fan. I'm not an apologist. 
Good, good. <laughs> but look, okay. let's let's just start at the beginning. Look, this this started, I guess, essentially in 1981. Yes. When you were a, a scrappy little 16 year old. Oh, and, it was, yeah. It was before you, that do, even. Do you guys I mean, remember? Probably, do you guys remember oh, the yeah. previews or anything, or <laughs> or anything about before yeah. before the before, first one, Raiders Lost Art came out? Does yeah. anyone remember? Ted, 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 were you like us? It's in the fact that. When you watched that commercial, the first commercial for Raiders, and you went, "What the hell is this?" Like it I was intriguing. Understand. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was just I, underwhelming. The only thing that I had seen prior to the film, actually seeing the film, there was a Starlog magazine, and it was a, a picture of Harrison Ford as Indy on top of the uh, the huge statue in the Well of the Souls. Right. And he's kind of crouched against the ceiling and he's starting yeah. to rock the thing. Right. So I see this picture and I'm like, I'm solo riding a dragon. What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. And then I remember seeing one of the trailers and it was kind of, I mean, for the day, kind of quick cut and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 But I remember him shooting machine guns, which I found out later on is like in the Ravenwood bar, but there's all the spark kits going off. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, he's riding dragons. He's riding horses. They're <laughs> shooting laser guns. <laughs> what is this movie? I didn't I didn't know what it was. I didn't get what it was, you know. Yeah. I think that was too at the time when, you know, we didn't have the internet and all these other ways to find out about oh. what movie was being developed or was coming out. You know, Star Wars had come out, burst upon the world, this breakout performance by Harrison Ford as Han Solo. I I remember seeing the trailer. I remember seeing like him hanging from the truck, the side of the truck. I'm like, Okay, this looks like some kind of like action movie, but what is it? Because I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize at the time that it was just in the same way that Lucas brought back the cliffhanger serials of the science fiction age of right. Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers. He was doing the same thing, like the, just the action adventure Republic serials. But I don't think most people really were ready or knew knew that. I think that was kind of the fun of those days. I mean, like even when I saw Star Wars. I hadn't seen a single trailer. I right. hadn't seen any press because mm-hmm. again, I was nine. So w- right. you know, I'm not reading the Hollywood Reporter or Variety. Right. It was just that <laughs> discovery. My, yeah, my grandmother had taken a couple of my cousins to the film, and then she told my parents, you know, hey, I took the kids to this Star Wars film. I think Ted and Steve, my brother Steve, I think they might enjoy this too. You should, <laughs> you should check it out. And I was like, what Star Wars? I don't, you know, this sounds fun, science fiction. And my parents took us well they they took us to the theater they dropped us off and we walked in and you know boom like that and it was like holy crap what have i just entered into you know nine yeah, years old yeah. and it's like you know so it probably started there because there you got lucas then you got harrison ford and then it's like well i'm just going to follow anything you guys do but with star wars though i think i speak for all of us that as soon as we saw lasers and robots and things like that. I was like, okay, I'm going to see this. Like yeah. this, yeah. Right. no matter right. good or bad, I am going to see this. But with yeah. Raiders, it was a little trickier for me because yeah. I had just seen Star Wars and I was used to Han Solo, that character. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and here's Indiana Jones, slightly different. There's horses. Yep. And I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what this is. <laughs> is this a Western or like, what is this? The last thing Spielberg had done at that point was 1941, which was a bomb. Oh yeah, yeah, so it, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a guaranteed slam dunk. You right. weren't oh. sure it, you weren't going to have a great time. But I had I saw it in a sneak preview. I had no idea what to expect. And about a month before, I had a cat that got run over, and I was 16, and it was my very first experience with mortality, mm. and I was so depressed. And yeah. sitting through that movie. I began to feel alive again. I was I was stimulated and I was so relieved. I could almost cry because it's like, oh my God, yeah. there's such a thing as happiness again in my life. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. It, it's like seeing, watching it again. You know, we, my wife and I watched all of them again. And, but that first one, I try to separate, like, is it just nostalgia? But like the joy I get from that movie, it's not just that it's a good movie. It's like a perfect movie. And the first one is, yes. Yeah. And it's, I pull that word out too. I'm sorry, Sean, but I I mean, my, my wife, I'm, I'm hard on films at time. I mean, I will pick them. I mean, number one, I'm a filmmaker, so I can sit on set and listen to directors and producers and decisions they make and this and that go, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. Cause I mean, I've been making. You know, I started out making super eight films and stuff like that when I was really right. 10 years as old. We, as we all did, so, right. 
Okay. You know, and so that's the thing. It's like, but that film, whenever I throw it on, and I could throw it on almost every other day. And it's just, it's in the background. It's a noise. I can sit and watch it. And I love it every time I watch it. And it is, it's a perfect It's a perfect film. movie. Perfect. And my, my wife yeah. has said that's huge praise coming from me because I am <laughs> tough on films. Right, but it right. is, you can watch, I mean, there's very few films I feel are perfect. Right. That's one of them. Yep. I mean, I'd probably put up their jaws. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yep. The, the, the earnest know. films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ernest well, scared earnest, stupid. Ernest two is probably, I don't know. It's true. I, I can't think, rip enough. I think too, that like, you know, when Star Wars came out, we're like, oh my God, who's this George Lucas? This movie is amazing. And then Close Encounters came out. Oh my God, this what is this movie? Spielberg, this is amazing. And then they both got together and made Raiders. It's like, right. that's when you just had faith in the world, you know? Like, like yeah. it was just like, you know, you're going to be blown away and, it, and you do and you are, you know? And that was a run too. That was a run of oh, so you have yes. Jaws, you have Star Wars, you have Raiders. And to piggyback on what James was just talking about, it seemed that for a while there, almost every time we went to a movie, especially to see a blockbuster, we were going to be happier than we had been in the past month. You know, like yeah, it was yeah, going right. to be, there was going to be a moment. There was going to be a, I remember in at the end of Star Wars, when Han Solo comes back with Chewie at the end, yeah. I was like, I don't know if I'll ever be happier than this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, I know. And it's the oh, same yeah. thing with, with Raiders. I remember watching Raiders as soon as the ball came rolling down and the whole thing with the idol, I went, Mm -hmm. okay, I am blown away. And I never thought that this movie was going to be like this. Yeah. The music that starts, I mean, it it grabbed me as a kid, like immediately because (laughs) that silhouette of Indy going through the, 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 you know, the jungle with the Paramount mountain, which I have been to in Kauai and, you know, wow. had to go to the end of that road and go, that's the mountain. Wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, but you get that silhouette and then, yeah, you know, bum, 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 you know, him coming out of into the sunlight. Finally, you get to see him. They had me from frame one in that film. Yeah. I mean, so literally frame one. And it's just, it's a perfect film. There's a couple of moments in that film. There's two films that actually still give me goosebumps on my on my arms. Raiders is one of them. And there's one moment in Raiders. I don't care what's happening. All of a sudden, I know that scene's coming and I'll look up. Goosebumps. The other one is Superman. Mm-hmm. Superman. Reeves, Superman. Another one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When he first turns to Superman, flies up, he grabs Lois. That's a great, yes. great moment. Yes. Then, and I credit to John Williams, this is probably why, because they both have perfect music beats to them when he catches the helicopter and then they go boom into the bomb, bah, 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 you know, and the Superman theme tingles every time. Yeah. In Raiders, for me, that tingly moment is when they've taken Marion, the sub is starting to submerge. Captain, we can't find you know uh, Jones anywhere. You know, look again, found him, and he points, and that music goes, and <laughs> he's up there on the on the the yeah. conning tower of the sub, and he's like trying cheers. to get his footing. Holy, every time, yeah. chills on my arm because yeah. it's Me just too. perfect. It's I just know. perfect. It's funny the the stories that I heard about the creation or the what started it all had to do when Lucas was in Hawaii trying to hide thinking that star Wars wasn't going to do well. And, (laughs) and Spielberg had done close encounters and they're talking and they both, and Spielberg said, Oh no, it's going to do well. And Lucas all, no, no, no. And they agreed to give each other percentage of each other's film. (laughs) And Spielberg ends up making $40 million off star Wars and he had nothing to do with it. But there was this discussion of, of, well, what else would you want to do? And Lucas had brought up this idea of a serial thing. They revisited after the empire strikes back. And the funny thing, if I remember correctly, and James might know this too, there was a very popular TV show on at the time called magnum pi yeah. and everyone thought oh my gosh that tom sucks a really big strapping guy God, he he'd be good as this indiana jones character and so they actually approached him but he was in uh, he had a contract with uh, the tv series Selleck they had were- the job and i think that there was was there a strike going on and they weren't sure if it was you know something and the strike ended or 
something with the or maybe the show was like not quite picked up yet or something mm, really and well then, the, i mean because he had the job as Indy, and then but he couldn't get out of his contract he couldn't from, get out uh, of the Magnum. contract and so they're trying to figure out well who would you want and then it was spielberg who said you know i just saw uh, or we saw Empire Strikes Back. And before he even opened his mouth, Lucas said Harrison Ford. And it's almost like Harrison Ford was not the first uh, yeah, which is interesting. person. That was it was Spielberg's I, first choice. Yeah. Yes. Wanted, yeah. And Ford and uh, uh, Lucas didn't want to use him. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the and screen test? Just, you know, the screen test? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, well, and, you know, the funny thing, you guys have seen the the production drawings that uh, the, the great uh, um, comic artist uh, Jim Steranko. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's it's this tough. And I mean, it's Tom Selleck without his mustache. I mean, you know, Indiana Jones is just built like a brute. You know, he's (laughs) you know, he looks like Tom Selleck without the stash because he is just built and big. And but I would argue that the jawline is Harrison Ford. A little bit. But I I know those paintings were done before the film, but they, you know, they there's something about the casting of Harrison Ford. And I think it's something that people really identify with is yes, he's strong. Yeah. He's big. He's not the biggest guy, nor is he the strongest guy. Right. And no, that's he right. Gets, he gets hurt. That's why. Yeah. And he's in pain. And we can all kind of identify that where, you know, you get tumbled and you know, you, you you're not always successful. And that's something about that character that I think people really identify with or love. I would also say that so much of it is Harrison Ford because watching all the films again too, and the new one, regardless of what I think about some of the sequels, he's more than just a good actor. He's a true movie star, you know, and it just comes off so clearly. And he, I mean, it would be, there would be different movies without him. I mean, maybe it'd be somebody else. Do you think it would it have gone on? I don't know. You know, if it was the same dialogue, everything like that. And it it had Tom Selleck. And I mean, I like Tom Selleck. I mean, I watched Magnum. You know, I enjoyed it. I, well, I watched his other. He got to play Indiana Jones. I mean, he was in Lassiter and High yeah. Road to China. High Road to China. High Road to China, China was China. basically his. Yeah. They, they weren't no, terrible the films. They were fun. But I mean, there's no Lassiter 2. There's no High Road to China 2. There's, <laughs> he, no, he doesn't. No. no, look. He doesn't have the gravitas that Harrison Ford has. And that, to me, is we we're talking about, yeah, he's not the toughest, but he can sure take an ass kicking yeah, and, and yeah. come out of it determined. And I think that's a Harrison Ford thing. I would also say that, you know, you're talking, Sean, about the movie star quality of Harrison Ford. I would also say that he is a really fine actor because he could have, if yes. he was a lazy actor, he could have basically walked into Raiders and done Han Solo again. Absolutely. Yeah. And he because, didn't do yes. that. He gave well, it a he, twist. He almost plays two characters in all of the films, sort of, where it's like Mr. Jones, Professor Jones. Yes. Is this kind of uncomfortable guy in the classroom? Yeah. He's a little yeah. bit stuttery. He's not, he's a little bit nervous, sort of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a weird energy to him every time he's in the classroom and he's in a suit and tie. Yeah. He doesn't feel comfortable in it. And as soon as he puts on the hat and the leather jacket, you know, it's, that's it's, where he's comfortable. It's like it's like kind of Clark Kent and Superman, you know. And yeah. And the thing yeah. is, though, yeah. also also watching these, I, I realized, too, after watching all these films, if I'm ever watching him as Indiana Jones, I only see Indiana Jones. I never go. That's Han Solo. That's Rick Deckard. Right. When I'm watching yeah. a Blade Runner movies, I never go. That's Indiana Jones. That's Han Solo. When I'm watching Han Solo, it's it's true. Like it's and and, and you know. Let's face it; these these roles of his, it's not like he dons and makes himself look all different no, in all these no. roles. He's not he's, Peter Sellers, you know. He's no, not right, but, but he doesn't have to be. But he pulls it right. off. Like uh, it's just there's he's he's uh, a, a naturalness to him. Yeah, he's a believable. I, I think too the difference between Selleck and Ford. Ford was a little bit more um, relatable. You know, he wasn't a big yeah. muscle guy. You know, right. he's just. He was like a lean guy and he didn't have like a perfect face. He's not, a, you know, he's a handsome guy, but, you know, he's got the scar on the chin. His nose is a little crooked, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Of course, he's a good looking guy, but he, he's he's still kind of a an everyman. Yes, know, type that's guy. why it works. Well, and uh, he I looks know, like he's so, been in a few fights. He looks like yeah. he's been in a few fights. That's why that nose is like that. That's why, <laughs> you know. But something else that I think makes him relatable is that he's not just an action hero. He's not just no. an academic. 
but he is an archaeology nerd. Yeah. He's yes. So into I, it. I do love is, that. I do I do love that even it's, it's other yeah. dimension. Yeah. I mean, even though these are these are escapist fluffed big budget movies, there is that that element of a love and a appreciation for history. Yeah. You know, and education even like I mean it's just it's a, it's subtle, but it is there in all the movies, and that's nice. Yeah. And I, I can appreciate I know we'll talk about all the different regions of India and stuff like that, but I was younger and thirsty for more India, and that's you know, the young Indiana Jones Chronicles came on and you know, I I enjoyed them for what they were trying to do at the time. You know, I got a little quote unquote indie. You know, but they were trying to make them like educational. So you're meeting all of these mm-hmm. like, people you know, history. historical people, people, people in history. Like I, I tried watching them recently because they both they all came on. Me Disney, too. And man, it's a slog. Fest. Yeah. I, well, I, even, yeah. yeah. Here's the it's, thing with that. With that show, I give it a lot of credit for being as uh, as highbrow of a show for kids that it yeah. was and that it's kind of violent. But I mean, I just watched the first episode again and you know you got lawrence of arabia as a character yeah you have a nice conversation about comparative religion you have a look at you know the horrors of slavery and there's a lot of depth the problem is there's very little indie there's the thing that we associate with indiana jones is almost missing entirely yeah you've got a guy it's so distracting the fellow that played uh henry you know the yes, Sean Connery, uh, Sean Patrick. So the, you know, no, 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 the, the Henry Senior character, oh, his father, George, right. George, yeah, right. George Hall, George yeah. Hall. You know, and he's just like you know, he's sort of trying to do the Sean Connery. You know, it's just like, <laughs> and it's like you know, it's like uh, don't even try, just no, you know, yeah, just, yeah. Just, <laughs> just be your your version of the character. Don't right, try to be right. Sean Connery. It's fine, you know. Right. Um, well, he it, didn't talk too like much, a, so that was good. He did talk too much. I, I found it really funny that that first episode. <laughs> where they're in Egypt and they're, you know, all this stuff and there's Lawrence of Arabia and or, or just Lawrence and uh, Indy is about 10 and looks like he's four foot tall. I don't know if you noticed, but when his folks are leaving Egypt and Indy goes to get on the boat at the end, and this is just right after one scene leads into the other, he's a head taller <laughs> and he, his voice is kind of cracking like this. He is clearly a year and a half older. <laughs> I don't know what well, happened there with, with oh, uh, Ted. Ted, Ted, they grow up so the fast. Dude. They do. <laughs> oh, no. And I've, I've been on films with kids where it's like, you know, you shoot for three, four months and going, right. That kid grew like three inches. <laughs> you know, <they're, laughs> yeah. wardrobe's trying to catch up and like letting pants out and stuff like that. I've seen it. Right. Before we go any further, and I should have said this earlier, Ted had brought up the Young Indy Jones Chronicles from 1992. And look, for listeners, if we may be saying some spoilers here oh, throughout good, good the series. Good point, especially the and, new movie. Yeah, yeah. And, and we are going to talk about that. So if you haven't seen the latest movie, then listen for a little bit and come back yeah. maybe <laughs> go like, see it but if you then... haven't seen these other films and would like to just understand the nature of these indiana jones films is there's great action stuff that you know would kind of spoil it for you if you don't see it so for sure. there are yeah. will be spoilers so i'm sorry matt there you go no no that's fine and uh but i have no problem spoiling any of the young indiana jones chronicles so <laughs> <laughs> they, they sort of spoiled their selves yeah but, yeah uh, <laughs> There's the one episode late in the series where Ford himself shows yeah. up as Indy in the framing yeah. device. Really? Yeah. Which yeah, is a little, a little uh, inconsistent, but it's fun to see Mystery of again. the blues. He's got his fugitive beard. Right. And uh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's an element of that show that I have a problem with in some of the other films. And it's a personal thing. And that is, as a kid and watching this thing now, I would never was into shows where a kid was the star. As a child, I always wanted to be an adult. I was looked right. up to adults right. and I always wanted to be an adult hero. I never wanted to be the kid hero. I always thought, what? Right. Why is this kid here? Like he, he's the first guy that's <laughs> right. going to get killed. You know, but here's, right, here's right, the funny right. thing. I know we all have grown up over these last you know years watching Raiders of the Lost Ark. And now being the age that I am, I'm 
20 plus years older than Harrison Ford was when he made Raiders. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, I'm watching a kid in my eyes. This is still, you know, I'm a kid and I'm watching this adult. Girl, play all right. Oh, and yes, for sure. You know, yeah. well, I, I, I did the math the other day and it's like, I'm three years away from the age Sean Connery was in Last Crusade. <laughs> wow. uh, and I, I was only 58 when they shot Last Crusade. Wow. Oh my God! Ford, like Ford was forty-six. See, that's, yeah. that's, that's, well, that's one of the issues. That's one of the issues that I had with that movie. Like, I just didn't buy that he physically that he is his, he is Sean Connery's son. It was just you know. <laughs> but just, no. me, I but think Connery Connery played the doddering man well, but you know. But yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll 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 get to that. We have another film to talk about, but just I want to say to Matt though, I do respect what they were trying to do with Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Me too. So if you, if you yeah, think yeah. about it, if you think about I watched it, them all. Matt, I, Matt, I think you are absolutely one hundred percent right, and I don't say that very very often. <laughs> you know, you, they tried to give the, the they tried to give the history, and look, this was a big budget TV show. Yeah, it yeah. Only oh lasted yeah, two yeah. Seasons. One of the and one of the things they did to bring the cost down is they shot in sixteen millimeter. Because it's like, hey, I'm not shooting in 35. They're thinking people are going to watch these on the on their TV screen. And they also did some um, groundbreaking VFX. They were doing, they yeah. were shooting on something. I think at the time, and I remember reading, was like High Eight, huh. which was yes. like digital digital yes. video or something like that. Yeah, I mean, huh. there's some of those World War One scenes where it's they were doing like some groundbreaking VFX stuff that was inexpensive but yet really paid off on TV. Huh. There's the scenes where it's like the horses with the gas masks, like the world war one. It was just amazing. But like they had like four horses and like 12 guys and they just, they shot that element and then they layered them up. Oh, and right. it looked like there were two, 300 guys. Uh, also yeah, it's, it's another neat neat thing. Stuff. A lot of people don't realize it is a lot of young directors got their experience Mm. on d doing yeah. the Indiana jo young Indiana Jones Chronicles including Joe Johnson and actually Carrie Fisher too. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So uh I mean there's a there's a, <laughs> a slew of uh people who after they did this went on to bigger and better things. Right. <clears throat> well I I love the I love the idea of the historical fiction angle and having all these historical characters interact and drawing on like I used to get the paperbacks just because, again, I love the idea of you could go back and, okay, this is a World War One or World War II story, and here's Mata Hari or whoever. But then I didn't actually, I, I love the idea of them, but I didn't actually read them. I didn't invest the time <laughs> in watching, but I still enjoyed the fact that they were available. Right. So wait a minute, but, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you bought the books of yep. Young Indiana Jones. Not young Indiana Jones. I, I bought this series of just Indiana Jones in his the novels. Oh, okay, novels. Okay, novels. okay. All right. Now, hey, now I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> the covers were <laughs> beautiful. The covers were, were brought. They were the selling point for me. They were gorgeous. And now, done now, by J Drew Susan some of the time too. Yes. I mean, yeah. the guy who did all of the great yes. posters. I mean, uh -huh. most of the posters. But there was a there was, so a, there was a comic. There. there was a comic series too, and yes. uh, there was all, one yeah. one called a. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, and it had such a gorgeous cover. And I, I just yeah. love the fact that oh, there, there's another angle. All of these, you know, kind of mythical, yeah, things, like Atlantis. Yeah, it's like that, that's great. I, I love all that stuff. Know, yeah, and that's what I've actually... always said. It's like it's like any of the Marvel stuff and all that. They have such a volume of good comics and books and novels and all this stuff to draw from. It's like why aren't we getting more? It's like, yeah, how, how long have we been watching James Bond? How many Bonds have there been? How many like that? I want I want more indie. You know, I but love as, my Harrison Ford, but I, I want more indie. Now, as soon as Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, and it was a huge hit, and of course, the holder of the Star Wars toy license was Kenner. And of course, they jumped on the bandwagon too. And they made a series of in, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark toys. And what's interesting is if you think about it, they made a large size, a 12 inch figure of Indiana Jones, and they hardly had to do anything because the head already existed for the large <laughs> Han Solo figure. It's the, the Han Solo guy. guy. <laughs> it's the same, yeah, with a different outfit. But, Never like you know, the hat. No, the and you're, and you're right. You're, you're right, Matt. The hippie hat. That my, terrible. my brother had. I know my younger brother <laughs> had, he got the large figure, I got the smaller one, and all the little play sets and stuff. 
and the little monkey and things. And and Matt, you have a you still have a a, a play set, don't you? I do. I got it years and years and years later when I was trying to buy a mostly mint model kit of the Pirates of the Caribbean kit, Dead Man's Raft. I'm sure you've oh, yeah. yep. mm-hmm. heard of it, remember it. Yeah, uh, wonderful it. kit. But with this eBay auction, you got that and you got this Indiana Jones play set with no figures. It uh, had pretty much all of the snakes and it's, it's the yeah. uh, Well of Souls. Yeah, yeah, it had the, the Ark, Ark of the, of the Covenant. Covenant. And, right, yeah. Ark of the Covenant. It was missing the Ark. So the I money. found the Ark yeah. and then I got some figures and it's a really beautiful set. I mean, the amount of sculpting on this playset is wonderful. And that's sort of juxtaposed to the sculpting of the actual figures, <laughs> well, specifically um, Indy yeah. and Marion. Understand, too, they were Kenner was doing its kind of Star Wars figure esque, where the, yes, the faces right. aren't quite right. as detailed, but they <clears> were, <throat> I mean, most, half, yeah. most of them were there, you know, and it came, there was a truck. There's a little truck. There was the little map room. The map really room, cool. right. Yeah, and, that's cool. Uh, and the, the, the streets of Cairo, which actually came with a little basket and a little Marion huddled over, <laughs> and it came with a little evil monkey, you know? And, and of course, was a bunch the monkey of fruit. evil? Well, yeah, it was a spy. Yeah, yeah it was a spy yeah. monkey. I, mean, high spy Hitler, monkey. I just, I didn't think monkeys could be evil. Yeah, he okay. he's, 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 yeah. Well, he's a Nazi. Course, he's a Nazi wait, monkey. Where he he's, a tra- he's a trained <laughs> monkey. <laughs> Toy, Toy Story 3, the little monkey with the tambourine have, thing. Have you ever that's seen Day of monkeys. the Dolphin? It's not yeah. the dolphin's <laughs> fault. Well, but that's a whole nother episode. That's another episode. Hey, hey, Larry, Larry. He's trained to be a Nazi, that poor little monkey. <laughs> yeah. Little Nazi uh, monkeys. Larry, Larry. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I wanted to ask you because the way you know how when Star Wars came out, nobody knew it was going to be so big, and they were late with the toys. When the Indiana Jones Raiders of Lost Ark toys came out, were they successful? Well, because I thought they weren't uh, as successful. They, they were no, they they were not. I mean, I, I I'd say that's not really true, Sean. I'd say they were moderately successful. There's this great toy book that goes through the history of all the great. Winning toys like Barbie, G.I. Joe, right, right. Legos. <clears throat> and what they were saying is those ones that we know of, those are like exceptions to the rule. The standard rule was a toy line, a decent toy line will last like three years and then it goes away. Mm-hmm. And and things have changed now. There aren't as many kids now. Right. And so and, and now the toy, the toy industry is like struggling like crazy. Um, is that, and that's because kids aren't really playing with as many yes, toys these days. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah and, we're getting into a whole other thing, but but yeah, getting yeah. They're, they're selling them to us guys. It's it's more yeah. of a collectibles <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a collectible it's industry. You know, Ted is right, but to get back yeah. to Sean's question, it's it a was bunch of it was it was moderately exactly. Sean, <laughs> Sean, it was moderately successful, not successful enough to keep making oh another line. And right, line. right. Although right. then, when the second movie came out, there was a a new batch of toys. In, right, right. Uh, we're talking about 1984's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which caused a lot of there were big issues with this. Yeah, film. yeah. And was it wasn't that one of the first films that led to the PG thirteen? That is rate yes, rate? It was yes. Definitely and and I and I think I mentioned one, yeah. this too. I, I was working at the movie theaters at the time, and it was a big deal because movie tickets went up from five dollars to five fifty. I remember when the theater they were all <laughs> excited because they're gonna make fifty cents a day. But but the <laughs> people who worked in the in the ticket booth were going nuts. Oh, how many quarters we're gonna have to give out? You know, I it, it was, right, I got it. It was it, it was hel- yeah. Think about it. If you go to a movie five bucks a person, five ten. Bingo, you're done. Now it's like five fifty percent. Eleven. Ah, oh, here's the quarters. Ah, oh, you know. You got to dig for change in your pocket. Yeah. It's terrible. Yep. But but Sean, <laughs> this I is all great stuff, Larry. Uh, I, yeah. No, no, no. But I remember <laughs> Sean. I remember we can talk about. There's this dining room table scene in the film where a bunch of gross things are shown, and yeah, parents yeah. got upset. Well, I would say, by, yeah. Look, one thing that people forget, I think, is that first of all, it goes back to Jaws. Jaws was James. Correct me if I'm wrong. PG, right? Oh yeah. It was, yeah. Was that it? movie. That movie PG. is PG. Yeah, it was. And PG. Kids were going to see that movie with like well, they didn't severed, rip anybody's severed, heart le- on their severed, in that one. But there's gore. There's severed legs floating <laughs> in the water. Yeah, there's a guy being only eaten one, alive. Only one, there. Only one can leg. have an eye socket. <laughs> it's like it's like it's scary to oh, and people clean people. Fun. <laughs> people also forget that the original Raves of the Lost Ark is also very violent and gory. 
Oh yeah. You have you have corpses. You have when Alfred Molina is killed, you have like his face is like his makeup effect, like impaled in his face. Yeah. And of course, of course, the ending with, with this. It's, yes, it's a supernatural happening, but people's heads are exploding. <laughs> you know, and but, and the but, thing is, but Sean, to appease the ratings board, they put a layer of flame in front of the exploding belly oh, face. Mean? Yeah. And that, and that was to appease well, the censors. Oh, okay. But then you have the clear as day lingering shot of Tote Tot's uh, face melting into a skull. <laughs> well, that's I mean, okay. He's a Nazi. That was okay. But that's, that's, that's what I'm saying is that, <laughs> that when you got to Temple of Doom, Temple of Doom involved, first of all, involved these like emaciated children's slaves. Human sacrifice. Ter- had tor- Human ter- sacrifice. Ter- ter- terrified natives being burned alive. And raiders... All the really horrible, gruesome stuff happens to bad guys. In Temple of Doom, there's a lot of genuine horror to innocent people in the film. Right. And I it's think that movie. caught people off. Yeah, but not, and the thing that caught people off guard. Yes. The whole Temple of Doom section and all of that movie, I enjoy it, but I just don't think it belongs necessarily in Indiana Jones films. Or if it is, it's it's placed very awkwardly because people went in expecting, you know. I mean, it's it, it gets to a point where it's wow, this is fun, but in a very different dark. It, it was what? darker. That's it was much darker. When I first saw that film, when it came out, I had problems with it because of you know the logic policeman in my head went, oh, yeah, yes. that's well, just there, ridiculous, yes. and that. And it's funny because I I know that we've all watched the all of the movies again recently. Yes, and all of them I like a little bit more than I did then. And we're not talking about I do the, too. the original Raiders. That's up. That's a, as yes. we've discussed is a perfect. Movie. That's on its own. Yeah. yeah. That's on its own. But with temple of doom, I got an enjoyment out of it this time that I think I missed because as a film in and of itself, if I had never seen Raiders, I mm. think I would have been all over this movie. First of all, it's just beautiful to look at. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And the colors, and I like the horror in it. I love the it's vibe. I do too. It's definitely its own film, and it's it's funny is that it depends on who, who I talk to, the age difference, and all that stuff. So we all saw Raiders first, yes. Right. Oh yeah. And then Temple of Doom came out, yes. and so on and so on. Yeah. There's people I've bumped into, and they just go, "Yeah, I just don't really care for Raiders as much as Temple." You know, it just doesn't feel like Indiana Jones. Really? Because they saw Temple of Doom first. Oh, they, were ah. of, they were of the age. VHS wasn't a big thing yet. Right. They saw Temple of Doom first when they were 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. And then went, oh, wait, there's another one? Right. right. The Lost Ark thing. So that's what they have to compare it to. Yeah. So ah. that's their Indiana Jones. It's like. It, it's like Star Trek, and and James, back me up on this with Star Trek. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like you know, you're going to get a generation of people that are going Voyager is my Star Trek. No, right. no, no, right. the original Trek is my Trek. Yeah. Oh, sure, no. sure. You know, it, it's it's that. So it's like if you're introduced, or or even like the Star Wars prequels, you're going to mm. have a bunch of you know when they, you were ten, eleven, yeah. twelve, that's true. Years old, that's true. When but, the prequels yeah. came out, and it's like. I don't get those old things. They're grainy. Yeah. They're weird. They're, they, you know, the special right. effects, they don't move as fast. Okay. But Ted, let me ask you this though, because we are just talking about Raiders. Okay. Right. And as we've all, I think we all agree Raiders is a perfect movie. Right. So many, so many big franchise movies today, like whether it's a star Wars film or MCU or whatever it is, usually there is some element in there, whether it's a plot device or a character that just doesn't work. It doesn't necessarily ruin the whole movie, but there are elements that don't work or that are bothersome. And that, to me, is what Temple of Doom is. I, I, have, I have nothing against Kate Capshaw, no. but I just don't think she's interesting. And I, I know I realize that. And I think it's the writing, too. And I like the idea of like a kind of pampered singer, nightclub singer being thrown into this adventure with Indy. I think that's fine. But you needed somebody else who just was a better actress and that and along with some of that was the first indiana jones film i saw where like i go nope no way i call no way Mm -hmm. when they fly out that when they come out of the plane and land in with that raft and somehow survive because because i love it's absurd i love they they cross the line they cross the line of impossibility i will i will tell you guys right now i know we're kind of going in order temple of doom is number five to me Mm -hmm. 
Raiders is number one. Temple of Doom is still oh, number five. Interesting. Really? It's, it's well, see, always yeah. on the bottom of my list because no matter what anybody thinks of the other films, those are Indiana Jones. I feel Temple of Doom, it wasn't written for Indiana Jones. It's a guy in a leather jacket and a hat, but he doesn't feel like the guy from the first film. Mm-hmm. And it feels like Harrison Ford is sort of playing Han Solo. Hmm. He's a little bit more smirky, smarmy. He's not, it's like, I'm not sure who you're playing necessarily. Maybe he was a little lost though, too. Well, in the, in the writing of it. And, and, I was, and, and, and if, I, if I may. Written, Ted, there's, there's really weird. Just, I think three is way three, more of that. Then. But Ted, Ted, don't you think, but now correct me if I'm wrong here. The Temple of Doom is actually supposed to take place before. Raiders of the Lost Only Star. Only two ah, years ago. Ah, but that's, that's, that's and, another issue and, with No, 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 no. And I will yes, say this, Matt. Right. Matt, you had mentioned how much you love the opening of Raiders of the Lost Ark. I do, too. Yeah. And here, the opening is completely, well, I want to say completely different. It's in a completely different environment. Which I love. You know. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, I love yeah. the, that. As soon as, the they, yeah. Yeah. as soon as they fall out of the, uh, out of the, the temple, yeah. I didn't understand it because it was like, where is the camera going? Because this is at a point too in my life where I'm starting to understand film more. And I'm like, okay, she's on a stage and she's doing a stage show. She's a nightclub singer. But then the camera goes through the dragon's mouth and it turns into a fantasy where you've got kick lines and all this stuff. And it's like, what stage are they on? Where has the camera (laughs) just taken us? Because at the beginning, she's just on a little stage. Yes. Oh, no, oh Ted, Ted, come on. We're no, no, no. I know what, it's no, young, I know what, no, no, no. Bob Fosse. No, I know what <laughs> Went to Ted time. is trying <laughs> to say. It's from filmmaking, He's, it's like, where are we going as it, an audience? You know, it, where, where, where are we trying to be taken? It's like, and I kind of feel like you could have just started out with the song number and then gone to the, the guys at the table, Indy and, and Loche and all that kind <laughs> of stuff. And, 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 let them do their thing and the songs going on in the background. That's all you needed was a beginning, an introduction to this Willie character. And then you hear the song end, and she comes over to the table and still doing a discussion. I, you didn't need the, the, the opening number with the, you know, the rock hits and all that stuff. <laughs> I was so taken out of it. Even as a kid, really? just wanting more <laughs> Indiana Jones. I was just like, I don't know what I'm watching. here. Well, that, I, that's look, I get it. And every point that you made, I agree with when it comes to the logic, when it comes to Kate Capshaw. I don't think she's a bad actress. I think that no. she was given a one-dimensional role. It was weird going to that from Marion Ravenwood, who was right. yeah. oh, who I loved. I Indy's loved equal. So yeah, right. that that was a mistake. However, going back to it years later, I have a lot more respect for it because it is a spectacle and it's almost like it's the movie version of going on an Indiana Jones ride. Yeah. And and one thing I have to say that I really enjoyed about Temple of Doom is the humor was either really dark or it wasn't there. It was it was horrific. Mm -hmm. And then so when we get to three, everything's a fucking laugh riot. And yeah. that's that's probably <laughs> that's that that movie. I tried getting through that again, and that I'm is guessing, some you lackluster mad, you shit. Didn't, that, you didn't I'm, laugh. I'm guessing you didn't laugh. Enough dance numbers in Last Crusade for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, Not enough Ted, dance numbers. Ted, Ted, you know me. I like a little pizzazz. You you want a little springtime for yes. the exactly. yeah. I, 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 It's not an Indiana Jones movie without jazz hands. Look, Come on. Look, look, before 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 we jump to Last Crusade, uh, finish up okay, uh, this Temple sure. of Doom because Sean no Sean bring out some really great things and look I can't disagree. Uh, no no uh, look it's I I don't I I kind of have a love hate relationship with the film. Yeah, a little because, bit. Yeah. Because Ted, you the points you bring up are absolutely true, and and yes. there are I have some issues. I felt like when I was watching Indiana Jones, it's like, but that's not my indie. My my yeah, indie yeah. was in Raiders, right. and I wanted yeah. that indie to continue. And this was a different indie, <laughs> yeah. and that I had a little issue. But some of the sequences 
are great. Of course, you know, yeah. There's, there's, yeah, this there's, mind, there's this mind. There's this mind sequence. You know, this yeah. mind sequence of these. And I and one of my favorite rides as a kid was this Lost, uh, Lost Dutchman's Mine ride at Frontier Village. <laughs> and when right. I found out, oh, there's a mind thing. Uh, I I went nuts. I I couldn't wait for the mind thing. You but know, here, here's it, the thing though. That, but it, it's like, ridiculous, but it's yeah, fun. yeah. That's a that's the yeah. thing is like they're like went to me as soon as they jump out of the window from the nightclub into the car and drive off things go wonky yes. here and here and here and There's there so many but the, my, the mine shaft i like to point but it was ridiculous because first yeah. of all they're on that thing it seems like it's 50 miles <laughs> so we're, supposed to, we're, we're supposed to believe that all those slaves built that thing and they built like with tracks next to each other like what are they building a roller coaster like it didn't make any sense so, it didn't make any and i'm sorry and also, the, um, i also fit it's, it's a thing of like and i i, I can what i'll and i'll say this I, one of my favorite films of spielberg's 1941. I like 1941 oh, as well. Yeah. No. Now 1940, I like it. Yeah. It is amazingly horribly PC film. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. It would yeah. never no. be made today. No, no. I, I giggle like a 13 year old idiot every time I watch it. <laughs> um, but I love it. But that's the thing, too, is like that's a film where Spielberg said it would be funny if, and somebody said yes, and then they took it a little further. And it feels like in Temple of Doom, that's what Spielberg and Lucas were doing. They were going, yes. wouldn't it be funny if? Yeah, yeah. And it's like when 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 Indy and uh, uh, and Willie jump out of the window. Now, if they hit one awning and boom, bounced and into the car, cool. Yeah. The fact that they rip through three and then bounce off the fourth or whatever and then into a car, and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. And then they jump out of a plane into a raft, onto the snow, over a cliff. Yeah, it, was, like, it was like it was like it, it's, it's like it's like the later James Bond movies when they became yes. just a series of it's, crazy Roger it's Moore. Yes. set pieces. It it's like I don't, slapstick. yeah, because I, I did. There was no jeopardy. There was no like in, in the original Raiders. It's like wow, what the heck's going to happen? The, like I never Desert felt Chase, that. Desert Chase and Raiders, and unfortunately, when you are comparing a film to what we're saying is a perfect film, which is Raiders. You are never going to beat the Raiders desert chase, the truck chase no, with no. the Ark of the Covenant. Right. You're not going to no. beat that. You know, for years, everybody talked about what's the one uh, car chase. Um, like Steve bullets McQueen, or something. Bullet, yeah, bullet. bullets. Uh, right. I always talk right. about bullet. Nobody will ever beat bullet. You know, and I remember watching a film and going, they just beat bullet. Well, you, know, know, you guys have you you ever seen the movie uh, Ronan? Yeah. Sure, no, the, uh, I love Ronan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love yeah. that film. Also, and, Ted, though, like Raiders came out at a time when it was still like real stunt work. Nowadays, I, I guess you can make it look real, but there's something still even, that there was a real stunt man hanging from that truck. And like, it's just, yeah. it's, 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 in your, it's just real. These it's, days, it's, too, it's, even when there is, and you, they even proved it with this last film, when you do a ton of practical effects, which they did in the last film. Yes. There is so many layers of digital that it kind of takes away where it's mm -hmm. like, you know, where you like lengthen streets and build buildings right. and you're adding extras yep. and doing all yep. that stuff. And all of a sudden you're still watching a digital shot, even though like the horseback riding is real and the cars are real and right. things like that, where it's like, if you're not doing it on a New York street, with just simply in New York, yeah, it's not real. You're also not shooting it on film. Yeah, 100%. that's true, 100%. right? Film looks entirely different than digital. And so now that everything is digital, it has a glossed over look that makes everything yeah. feel and look the same. We had John Goodwin on, the makeup effects artist. He was saying, it's a good point. Like it's every movie, every TV show is like, they're all done in the same post facility. To a point, everything kind of looks the same. Like you can tell that even if the movie is trying to look like it's from the seventies, but somehow you can still tell. Like it's I don't know, there's just something missing. It's now, it's the James. difference between Star Wars and Return of the Jedi. It's the difference between Re Raiders of the Lost Ark and Last Crusade. Your film quality, even though they're all shot on film, those three, you know, between those films, your film quality changed. It got better. Yeah. You're yeah. not using like there's not, there's not that graininess anymore. There's not that that texture to the film or that grit that that made Raiders what it was or made Star Wars what it was. Yeah, 
it's a little bit slicker. Yeah. And as you start shooting on digital, then it's kind of like, how do you bring that back? Because you're, mm-hmm. you're still making a serial. And, you know, and we all grew up watching because we had three channels to watch. So we watched the old Flash Gordon serials and the, the what was it? Um, all the Republic Rocket, serials. Yeah. All Rocket the King of the Rock, Command, 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 Commando yeah. Cody, Commando Cody and all those. Commander Cody and yep. all that kind of stuff. And it's like they, they had this nice graininess yeah. to it. And mm-hmm. that's what Raiders was. It had that graininess. And none of the films after that had that. And right. I, th- I feel like the VFX quality on Temple of Doom were so below. It, it just, they were, I mean, it was ILM and it was a time when ILM was getting slammed. I mean, it's still mm-hmm. beautiful. The miniatures they built, the mine car chase that they did, that stuff's all really great. But then it, you take it to that degree of like, you know, this will be a great mine car chase, but then it goes into a realm of ridiculousness. Too. There are like, shots, yeah. There are shots in that, that like, where, where, like, it's it, Looney Tunes. Now. Like, yeah, it, it it's is. Looney Tunes. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, a, it's, it's yeah. a cartoon, and that's why Temple of Doom will always be my number five or number six or seven, whatever comes. I cannot argue most of the points you make about Temple of Doom because you can't. You just can't. But you know, it's one of those things that years later, like we've discussed about the black hole. Where right, right. years yeah. later we come back to the black hole and it's it's nonsense, it's ridiculous. But <laughs> for some reason, there's a charm about it, it looks beautiful. And so watching Temple of Doom again, I appreciated all those aspects, and then going then directly into Last Crusade, which had a whole set of different problems. I accept. Temple of Doom's problems over Last Crusade. I think really? Last Crusade. Okay. God, stop trying to make me laugh with all your fucking gags. Okay. And okay. if you look, and I you think- know what? And if you go behind this, if you look at all the behind the scenes stuff, there's so many scenes where you got Spielberg and Lucas talking about, well, we thought this would be funny. Hey, does everything have to be fucking funny in this thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're, uh, in my opinion, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery have zero chemistry between them. Okay. All right. All right. First of all, we're talking wow. about the film from 1989, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And I I, I respect what my colleague has said here. <laughs> no, you don't. About, <laughs> but, but it, like, you know, I, 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 I want to sit and watch that movie with Matt because I've always yeah. said Last Crusade, it's, <clears throat> I can't use the word favorite. It's not my favorite of all of the films. Mm-hmm. It's the most fun, mm-hmm. and I enjoy watching it. Raiders is still number one. Sure, I agree. You can't I, I, compare to it. No. Raiders is the best film, yeah. the best made film of all of them. But Last Crusade, I have the most fun watching. I, and and mm. I, I don't know where Matt gets this. Oh, there's no chemistry. I loved. I first of all, I loved seeing these two together because it's for me, hokey. Sean, it's Sean, hokey. Sean, it's hokey. It's Abbott and Costello. What, what's I mean, wrong with on. you? Where's your heart? Where you don't like Abbott and Costello? You, you don't. No, you, no, I, no, I, no, I don't no. like Harrison I, Ford. I love no. And Sean I, Connery playing I, Abbott I, and Costello. I loved. I loved the father son <laughs> relationship, and I, I bought it. Not. And the thing, and the thing that I like, or the thing that I love, is you know, with Sean Connery, there's such a prestige about him this is he's lovely bon- and, James and look, let's bond I don't, he's a big movie no no i'm talking now he's the big <laughs> movie star he's the big movie star and here he is matched with uh, t- today's current movie star these two big giants and i love their banter it's like dad there were rats rats i i love that i did laugh matt i don't know because you're the comedian you write stuff it's like oh that's not funny i could have done a better job no, th- no there was great funny stuff in there no there was and no and i'm just saying just say that's this. not the way i look at it and, okay well let's just say this you know look if you need a group of people for everyone to hate Nazis are the best. I, mean, I love. Hey, Nazis. I love the return no. of Nazis. I mean, and, I love the return I don't of know, Nazis. And and yeah. I don't know how anyone could see in the these film, films, Matt, go, right? Damn, I, film. uh, yeah, yes, in the film. <laughs> in yes. the film. Yes. <laughs> not not like, only not in the film. Not oh, not the current the real life return of Nazis. <laughs> to, to the no, point, I'm not. I'm not too point, keen on the on the modern day Nazis. No, or the past one, or really any Nazis. You know what? I'm going to take a stand here. I'm anti-Nazi. Can, can we can we just let James whoa, say whoa, one whoa. thing, please, James? <laughs> Thank you, James. sir. 
<laughs> no, to, to the point of the comedy, I mean, one of the really great and impressive things about Raiders of the Lost Ark is that the Nazi presence looms throughout the entire thing in a really powerful way, which obviously it should. By the right. time you get to Last Crusade, I didn't need him to be face to face with Hitler. I no, think that was more impactful terrible. If he I wasn't. thought that was cute. Cool idea. I, didn't mind, uh, I didn't mind that. No, it was too. It was too broad. It, it oh, to, to, see, to me, to me, <laughs> if you're talking about if you're talking about two on the nose, to me, all the two on the nose stuff was uh, the young Indiana Jones opening of that sequence. Right. The opening. Right. Okay. That were like in, 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 in the in the first ten minutes, we find out. How he got scared of snakes. He got his cat. Yeah. He got his also jacket. Terrible. Like, like, like that was also like really terrible. It's, it's like that to me. To well, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sean, I'm not going to disagree with you there. Yeah. It, we we didn't need that. No, I, I didn't well, mind. Ma I didn't Marcus mind. Brody. Marcus Brody. He was this respectable, uh, you know, professor in That's, the days, this academic. They did turn him into a buffoon. Drunken buffoon. That's the like, one thing the I really buffoon. didn't care for in that film is that Marcus, me in the first film it's kind of like i feel marcus was indie 30 years ago yeah don't yeah. and then you know, such a great I, actor I, you know I, and, and and here's the thing i enjoyed marcus in last crusade if you're going to take those films as two separate films you know again like if you see temple of doom I love that film that's a great film this indiana jones guy is great but you have to compare it to raiders Right now, if you're going to take Tem a Last Crusade and compare it to Raiders, that's a whole other thing. But if you get Last Crusade, it's like this is a fun movie. I love that doddering, you know, Marcus Brody guy. He was fun, but it's like if you have to compare him to Raiders, it's kind of like and that's they all the one thing I will, <clears throat> yeah. I will 100% agree is that as much as I enjoyed Denholm Elliott's motivation in the film. I thought they did a disservice to Marcus Bro. The character, yes. I yeah. agree. To the character of Marcus. I, I felt like it's like, I don't think that's who Marcus was. There were some fun interactions between yeah. him and Henry in the end, yeah. in the tank. Yeah. You know, some of that stuff was fun, but it's still, it's it's not that character. I, I felt like Marcus probably was, he carried himself so well yeah. in, in uh Yeah, Raiders. yes, I know. You know I he think was, he was a very smart guy. Yes, and, yeah. I, th I think also you know, maybe they it was just a nostalgic thing where they wanted to bring him back, but they didn't know what to do with his character. So like that, right. well, what's, yeah. what's his hook yeah. for this episode? Like, no, it's like well, treat him with respect, though, still, yeah, you know? I mean, the scene always bothers me when, I mean, it's funny. I like it when Marcus is there and he's like, you know, speaking, you know, is anybody speak English? And this that and is that and blah, blah, blah. right after Indian says he that knows get, a thousand languages. He'll right, blend in and disappear. Then it and, cuts. Uh, I laughed. I, I, la I laughed. I laughed. Marcus and um and Sala together. It's our first introduction to Sala in that film. Where we went, oh, cool. Sala's back. Yeah. You know, we yeah. get those together and all of a sudden Marcus goes away. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I think it's just kind of weird. Was super. It was that was really weak. I still enjoy that film a lot and I enjoy it more than Temple of Doom for sure. Me too. Um, but there's definitely weak moments. I, you know, listen, I, the, everything after Raiders of the Lost Ark, the strong points I really love and the weak points I really hate, you know, but yeah. there's more. I'll go with that. that uh, it, yeah. Each and every film has a strong point and a weak point and a strong point and a weak point. I've always said too about, you know, there's only been five indie films now. I'll take my indie the way I take. I'm a huge James Bond fan. There is some absolutely awful. Oh yes, James oh, Bond. I love them yeah. all. Yeah, uh, yeah I kind of like that too. I, I can't watch say the, that. I can't oh, say that. Oh, oh James, no, no, James. in a different way. I I love the bad James Bond for how bad they are. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and I can right. sit like and watch them. Right. I can yeah. sit and watch them and just go, oh my God, what were they thinking? <laughs> get, at least those were like in, in a whole different time period. Yeah, right. Sure, you know, my, sure. my wife is a, my, my wife Alona is a huge Bond fan. And even she was just like, what were they thinking? You know, it's just like, she, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. She knows I know. Her, Cringe or knows Bond. And yeah. Cringy. But it was like, we understand the period in which they were made. You know, right, you right. can't say that as much with with indie, but um, you know, they're also portraying a certain period of of time. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I I like my indie the way I like my Bond. You know, I'll take the good with the bad. Right, you know, right. I I get to see the character again. Will I watch License to Kill? I'll watch Casino Whoa. Royale. No, <laughs> but well, I'll still watch License to Kill if it's on. 
our our expectations are just you know they're they're informed by what we what we yeah. love about the first movie. But but I will say that I saw all three of those first three indie movies with my dad in the theater, and he did not discriminate. He loved all of them. He loved Temple of Doom. He loved Last Crusade. He was on the edge of his seat. He was so entertained. And I'm like, wow. I wish I wish I could have been as entertained. But I love and, the and fact films that too. You know, uh, you know, uh, I know we're, we're we're going through them, and we're up to Last Crusade. But I mean, films too, just in general, are dictated by who you see them with. You know, That's who true. did you see it with, and all that kind of stuff. I remember my first James Bond film, watching that. Saw it with my cousin. He had a couple of friends. We were in North Dakota. And my first James Bond in a movie theater was uh, For Your Eyes Only. Oh, and, wow. you know, Roger Moore was my Bond. You know, the way we talked about Star Trek or something yeah. like that. Roger yeah, Moore. yeah, true. And it's like, wait a minute. There was more of these Bond films? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's this Sean Connery character? Because right, Roger, yeah, yeah. Roger Moore is my Bond. Oh, shit. This Sean Connery guy is pretty cool. Hey, <laughs> my, like, my first my first Bond movie was Live and Let Die. And wow. I love that movie. Yeah, and yeah. Boy, <laughs> try to defend that one these days. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and again, they're all they're all great in their own respect. Right. I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah. they're I so get... fun to watch. It's, they're, they're just all a ride. You know, it's and funny. I think almost yeah. more more Bond than indie, honestly, because they're such a time capsule of the period. Yeah. yeah, and I know this is the Indiana Jones show, but the, the James Bond is just like they are such a time capsule, and you can almost forgive them because it's like they always Bond was always trying to like what's new and hot. Yep, yep. What's because it's such a long running franchise. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah, can, yeah, yeah. It's like you know you got Casino Royale. It's like oh, this parkour thing is kind of like yes, <laughs> right? Or uh, you know? what's the what's the? I mean, this is the, this this is the, off the rails of the, I know, of the I'm franchise. Sorry. No, no, but the uh, never say never again when they have the uh, the big the video which, thing. The big showdown with the video Jesus. game. Yeah. That is That's horrible. Hilarious. But it's like the air. Like, aren't they just like shit? Like little uh, bikes. It's, it's like, like asteroids. It's like, it's like asteroids. It's like, <laughs> it's like the horrible. stupidest fucking. It's like, and, and, it's, it's like and, Ed Wood Tron. Yeah, and you know, yeah. and you know, we'll, <laughs> and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll do that more on our Bond show, our next Bond episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry. Getting, I, back, I, getting I, back to I, Indiana I, Jones. You know, no, no, no. The thing is too. We've got Sean Connery. I mean, we do have James Bond in yeah. an Indiana Jones film. So yeah, you have yeah. to talk a little bit. And not to mention, but, uh, we yes, also and, have a and, Bond. We've got a Bond girl. Yes, in Indiana Jones film. That's right. Yes, and we yeah. also have a Bond villain in an in, in Indiana Jones. That's true. Film. That's yeah. true. Doing yeah. the in worst the accent film. ever. Well, wait. Which <laughs> one? Who? Oh, uh, Alice Julian Diddy? Glover. Okay, so there. Okay, there you go. go. So yeah. But yeah. now we've got Julian Glover, who's. A Brit You're right. Doing there. an American accent. Yeah, but yeah. He was also the AT-AT driver in Empire yeah, Strikes Back. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And then yeah. the guy who played Hitler is also the admiral that gets killed by Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Family. Nice. Yeah, I know. It's he, just like let's you're right. Bring to, but you're right. That you're right. Mad about Julian Glover is like. Hi, I'm an American. Listen, hey, you, this what, is before. Why, why did he have? Why did he? Why did he <laughs> Julian Glover is a great actor. He does great yeah. villain roles. Why did they have to make him do an American well, accent? It made no sense. I, yeah, and that's the thing too is that this is before. Like nowadays, apparently they got the note in England. Yeah, okay, if they're yeah. going to do an American accent. You got to nail it. And now they right. can do it better than we can. Right? That's true. That's and, true. But back then, mm. it was the same level of like. When someone would play an American in Doctor Who or Benny Hill, yeah. you know, I was like, "Listen, <laughs> yeah. you, I'm an American." And yeah. it's non, so a non-accent. Yeah. No, yeah. To, yeah, not to state well, state the obvious, but in terms of effects in Last Crusade, the Zeppelin, the chroma key on the Zeppelin. That's, uh, that, that's one of those weird, yeah, a, astonishing that, that you can put that much money and attention into a Spielberg Lucas film and have this horrible chroma key shot, Plus, and you can tell. Yeah. You can tell you knew it and because kind they of, cut away really quick. Yeah, kind yeah. of surprising that they didn't just build a giant miniature and shoot it against the sky. Also, yeah, also I mean, also, they, they built the yeah. miniature, but it's like, why not just shoot it against the sky? The actual sky, right. And why yeah. why, why did they not? I, I thought for sure when the Zeppelin shows up, there's going to be a huge Zeppelin crash and there's going to be like action on the Zeppelin. Why, where's that? Sort of like yeah, that? where's yeah, that? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. at least I'll, I'll credit Last Crusade that's why I enjoy it more than Temple of Doom because we're outside. You know, we get, we're, <laughs> that's we're true. Yeah. yeah. We skip from here to there. 
We're yeah. in Italy. We're in Austria. We're in that's Germany. True. We're we're on a cave the entire know, movie. <laughs> you know, we're not, I like caves, and I think that's what I enjoyed. <laughs> About uh, well, caves and dance numbers. What you know? Yeah, yeah you know me. Uh, you, yeah. you know what? You put a you put a dance number in a cave. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's, it, we've talked about this before. What can really make or break a film is the ending. With Raiders of the Lost Ark, you have this great ending. A Temple of Doom. The ending is not really the satisfying. And then with Last Crusade, the thing that got me is, gosh, I wanted, I I, I loved you know the Sean Connery thing, and I loved what was going to happen in the cave. But then you get to this night. Yeah, the night, and I just felt that was, I, I, I they couldn't. I thought it would have been cool is that they had like a skeleton that was stuck there, you know, with a little plaque that said, Cho- uh, you know, choose have the explanation, wisely, ra- yeah. something." But to have the old knight, oh, I've been waiting for you. I'm like, are I, you kidding? So he's been horrible, sitting there. Horrible. And, uh, I, no, I, I, no I, I'm with you, Matt. I'm with you. He's, I, he's, I like, the, he's like the it's horrible. character from Monty Python. Yeah. I've always felt yeah. horrible for that night at the end of the film when you got the Nazi sympathizer chick that like drops the chalice. It yeah. goes into a crevasse. So is this old fart of a guy now trapped in there or does he die? Or after the earthquake and everybody gets out of the cave, out of the cavern. Yeah. You know, Sean Connery, everybody, they go riding off the sunset. Yes. And I picture, I want to see the post credit sequence of this old <laughs> fart driving, it di- di- <laughs> like, oh, get this chalice back up here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the old guy? Wait, are you talking about the old guy? Oh, you're the talking about guy, the knight? The knight. Is he supposed to be protecting the, the, uh, the, the yeah, girl? Okay, so he's, he's like, he's climb like, down there, it. pick up the chalice. <laughs> I feel terrible for him. And it's like either uh, he can't have the chalice to drink out of anymore. And that's what sustains his, his life. So he's either going to just die or he's got to climb down. Right. This poor, what, thousand year old man is going to climb down, <laughs> grab the cup and then go back up and like that. And it's like, hopefully his footing is OK. He's got to go on that narrow bridge. Yes. Yeah. He takes a dump off that bridge and takes the channel. You know, like, I don't know. Oh, and a yeah, mine yeah. and a mine race is ridiculous. No, I didn't <laughs> mind. Well, let, let's just say, there. you know, I understand they're trying to create, you know, this great you know, awesome, exciting. It's uh, not ending. And, and, but, but, but I, it, it, I did that, like... that movie dies with a fizzle. It just fizzles out. And that's another thing too. So you start from, from the beginning, once again, going back to Raiders, we have this wonderful buildup in the first scene. You're like, Holy fuck. This is the greatest movie I have ever seen. <laughs> and it's, I'm 10 minutes into it. Right. Right. You go to the last crusade. Now I got to watch some fucking kid. Uh, jump around on a train. There's no real <laughs> danger. Hey, look, I love River Phoenix as much as the next guy. I don't blame him, but I don't want to yeah, see yeah. this kid. I want to see Indiana Jones. And then, as you guys were saying, all the all the beats that we have to check off at, yeah, as like we're that. going through that scene. Oh, this is why he's afraid of snakes. This is why he doesn't like the sky. This is why yeah, he doesn't yeah. like the, sleep in the nude. It, we, like that's <laughs> a little yeah, that's a little contrived. You know, keep every everything is in that beat. I mean, what I saw it. When it came out, I loved it. When I watch it now, I still really enjoy that film. But I'm like, I'm really surprised they gave us all of that in this amount. Exactly, of time. that's what it was. Yeah, you it know, was like he yeah. cuts his yeah. chin. He's yeah. afraid of snakes. He, he gets his the whip. Hat, gets the gets his jacket. Yeah. All within but what? Still. Like a within thirty minute period. You know? <laughs> yeah, I still yeah. enjoy it. I still have fun yeah. with it. I think it's a fun yeah. movie. Look, um, yeah. And that, and that, and then it's like a taste thing, you know. It's like it's your, yeah, yeah. And so, again, it's a, a film is gonna you're gonna enjoy it again with people you saw it with. And here I'll make you guys great. all, I'll make you guys all happy. <laughs> I took my I took my mom to that movie. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I sat next to my mom. She giggled like a fucking idiot. <laughs> like in the end with with the, with the air from the time that the airplane releases. Yeah. To them crashing, getting in the car, going through the cave, which I hate the cave thing with the plane. You know, yeah. it, it's terrible. The optics yeah. are bad on it. Yeah. yeah it yeah, is yeah, kind of yeah. sketchy. And yeah. You're right. That mm, blows yeah. up and they go through the yeah. fire and the bomb drops and yeah. they hit every one of those beats. My mom was giggling like an idiot. <laughs> and I think I enjoy that film as much as I do because I watched my mom enjoy it. Sure. So mm. it's not, I'm not trying to talk you into it because my mom liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why I enjoy it. 
You know, so I, I, mean, it's, I think that's lovely. Some that people enjoy awesome template tag. a little more, you know, because it's like, right. who did you, who'd you see it with? You know, see, right. and that, sure. that's why I like Deep Throat because I saw it with my mom. <laughs> all right. All right. You know, he they, they, laughed her ass so look, off. So you know, look, that, they just they just <laughs> changed that from an X rating to okay. an R because they put flames in front of all everything. Right. <laughs> all right. All they had to do was put the flames. <laughs> they just put flames in front of it all. So they're re-releasing. The it. gags are great. Oh, yeah, we got ah. so in, in 1989. In 1989, we had Indiana Jones: Last Crusade. Now we don't get another Indiana Jones film until 2008. Crazy. Now this was supposed to be a really old, hang, hang on year old Harrison Ford. <laughs> yes, yes, because we all know we've heard the stories how much Harrison Ford loved playing this character, and everyone was excited about this film, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, directed by Spielberg with Harrison Ford. You're going to have Kate Blanchett, great actress in this film. Oops. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Great actress in this film. Yes, but not great actress in this film. <laughs> He's a great actress there's, who there's, happened there's to be punctuation. in a film. Yes. There's <laughs> punctuation there. <laughs> right. Well, I felt with that film, they were trying to, it seemed to me like they were trying to make Shia LaBeouf, or however you say his ridiculous name, uh, yeah. that he was going to be like the next. Indiana, he was going to take over the mantle. Yes. And as I'm watching, I'm like, oh, wow. Why do I instinctively in my gut hate this guy? I don't. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There's an yeah. Ele- He's not a likable character. He's no. not a charismatic From the actor. very beginning. Right. From the very he's, beginning. He's, he's, he's not a great actor either. He's not a great yeah. actor. Well, well, well at, least, Falcon, at least at least not in that Falcon, movie. He's pretty great. Right. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, but at least not in that movie. Not but in that the, movie. And then on top of that, once again, I don't care how old Harrison Ford is and how old Indiana Jones is. I want Indiana Jones to be doing the stunts. You know, he he pulls up his shorts and oh, charges exactly. action. Yes. And, yeah. Again, and, and not, but the then you got Shia LaBeouf the doing it. Of the, guy. <laughs> the whole the whole <laughs> sequence, the whole sequence where Shia LaBeouf turns into Tarzan. I'm like, oh, what, oh, what the fuck oh, is going on here? It's like I agree. Like the whole thing, Matt. As much as you were annoyed by the father son element in Last Crusade, I was more annoyed by it in Crystal Skull because Sean, I, I agree. I the whole agree the whole the whole, the whole point of like him and the whole Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf being a greaser and like it's it's so ridiculous oh. and and it's so terrible. It, actually, if he surgically removed his character from the movie, it would be a much better movie. And and the thing is, I actually really love love the idea of the Roswell incident and aliens and that stuff. Yeah. And that I think that's a great idea with for, for India Jones to be involved it, with. It works for the period in yes. which that film is set. So right. if you're going to take this as like serials, right? Which takes place in 36. So we're emulating the serials that were happening in that era. And right. Temple of Doom and even Last Crusade to a, a point where it's the serials are... So now we move on to it's like 1950s. Right. And I was, mm-hmm. I, I thought that was so neat in the beginning after that opening sequence where it's like, you're on the military base and you see a couple of jet streets. Yeah. On. Yeah. It was like, Whoa, we're a, like, we're yeah, in a different era, it's different now. time. Yeah. But, but yeah. I also, you know, I also, I thought I liked Kate Blanchett's character. Cause I like to have the female, like the Russian villain, but they dropped the ball though. Cause you know, you had Raiders, you had the Ark temple of doom. You had these native sacrifices and the supernatural element and in kingdom of the sky, it looked like in the beginning, they were going to go into this kind of the psychic powers and psychic energy stuff that they're trying to harness, but they kind of dropped that a lot to me. And, yeah. and then it kind of was connected to the alien well, the stuff. Fact that that was they kind of they cool. brought her character in as something, even in the very beginning when they're just talking about her. Yeah. Uh, you know, w- once Indy escapes the, uh, the original, the, 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 the cold open and we're at the military base and they introduce her character kind of tell us about her character. It's like, Oh yeah, she's worked for Stalin and she's this and that and the, the psychic ability. And they never get into that anymore. No, really. They, he, she tries yeah. to kind of she tries they, to do like, really the Jedi mind it. trick on Indy and doesn't work. Yeah. And it like, would have been it would have been kind of creepy if all of a sudden it's like there was a connection between the two and yeah. all of a sudden you see you see Indy raise an eyebrow and go, Oh yeah. shit, there that, is that was that was that was that was kind of a, a lost um 
opportunity. And, well, and James, I mean, James. And, and again, I'm not going to be an apologist for this film. I mean, I, I enjoy it because it's indie. But again, there's parts I really like in that film, and there's parts I really hate in this film. Right. And there, and the difference between the highs and the lows in this film are hundreds of miles apart. Yeah. And, well, you know, James, that's the thing. James, there's James, there's, you, there's James, set you have, pieces that are cool. James, you had brought up that there's an issue with the script. The script was not the original script that was made. Right. And, well, all of all of these go back to the scripts. The difference between Lawrence yeah. Kasdan in the first one and Gloria Katz and Willard Hike in Temple of Doom is a quantum miles. And then Jeffrey right, Bowman yeah. in the third one, again, yeah. so the fourth one spent a lot of time in development. And you had uh, M. Night Shyamalan involved. Ah. Um, and then, oh, that's right. Uh, Wait, Frank Darabont? Was it Darabont? Well, Frank, have, you, Frank, have you guys read the Frank Darabont script? See, the for... Frank Darabont script is what the film should have been. And really? Spielberg, Spielberg that, loved that script. I've got that script. that script. And it's like <gasps> that thick. Wow. No, and <laughs> holy <laughs> crap. There's no son. Like really? Marion is married to somebody else. There's this yeah, whole, the, there's still well, a Russian element and a spy element, but there's like yeah. double agent stuff. The character of Mac isn't in there, which right. I love Ray Winstone, and he's wasted in this yeah. film. Yeah, yeah and he I really love is. John Hurt. John Hurt, he's yeah. Wasted. But, yeah. Wasted. Wasted, wasted. Wasted in this yeah. film. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, but, what, the, the Darabont script, that was a script Spielberg wanted to shoot. And then Lucas, yeah. in his infinite wisdom, said, no, it's not good enough. And then really? it, they gave it to David Kep, who is, to me, a hack. There's nothing he's written that I've really liked. I think if someone else had written Jurassic Park, I would have liked that more. David, I do not like, and he's written the last one, too. Yeah, but yeah. The Darabont script is beautiful. It's got this so cool. This, this tempo. It's beautifully well, you, written. If, if you're going to do anything, if you're going to digitize Harrison Ford and bring him back to a, an old, a younger period, make that one. Make that one. It, it's called Indiana Jones and the City of the Gods. And there's a lot of similarities to Crystal Skull. A lot of yeah. the same elements are in place. It's just, you know, Henry is in it. Um, you know, there, Sean Connery was apparently supposed to be in it. But he, I guess he said, no, I'm retired. I'm not doing it. And I think that's about when they started to play with bringing Shia LaBeouf. Oh, in, God. Both or whatever. Well, yeah. and and for, for a moment, there was going to be a daughter. And honestly... I'm going to jump a little bit to the new film only for these couple of beats. There's a lot of stuff from the new film that was in the Frank Darabont script. Ah, really? Ah. The, 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 the chase sequence in New York, like, you know, in, in the Frank Darabont script in crystal skull, you know, whatever see Indy in his leather jacket and hat for like almost until like halfway through the film. It's oh, wow. all about this giant chase sequence through New York him trying to figure out there's still a crystal skull but there's like this whole espionage thing going on in new york city and him there's getting a storage into different locker apartments. in grand central station when, and yeah when i when i watched uh the latest film and i'm like this is out of the darabont script mm. they took right. that <laughs> script and they took a huge action sequence and all that stuff out of the darabont script and put it in there and in kind of the um the character that uh, um phoebe waller plays Helena, you know, is Helena is is a bit from the the Darabont script Mm, as well. Interesting. Well, yeah, I I, I feel they they haven't said that, but I mean, I really feel that it's like that script and went, this might be kind of cool if we do this here or do Mm. that there. And well, after after Crystal Skull came out and was such a disappointment and you have the South Park guys, you know, having Spielberg and Lucas raping Indy. Um, <laughs> Wiki leaks. Julian, Julian Assange actually uh, leaked the Darabont script. He he no. got into it. Really? Yeah. And, and that's wow. how people were exposed to that screenplay. Well, well, and again, what? anybody anybody who's an indie fan, go online. It's available. Read it. You're, yeah. You'll yeah. love it. You know, one thing about we talked about how the, the I call no way aspects of like Temple of Doom with falling out of the airplane or the mine shaft, whatever. Nothing tops the refrigerator. Oh, that, the refrigerator! Uh, talk, talk talk about Looney Tunes cartoon. Yes, that, that yeah, was just I, I, I was out at that. I was like, Done. "Fuck you! That, don't that do this!" You. Wow. Exactly. Wow. That refrigerator wow. would have opened Larry, up. you don't think that was a ridiculous I, moment? I, I, I did. Up. I didn't. I didn't say. How that. did he live through that? No, no, no. Oh, I, I, wait I, a minute. I didn't say. Ted Haynes has something to say about this. No, no, no. I said when that refrigerator flies overhead. For me, it's an editing. Okay, for a half a second, 
Yeah, don't show it like zooming over like a jet. Zooming, and you hear yeah. the Wilhelm scream. And yeah, it's and, like, he, and, and he, and he, he tumbles, tumbles for about five minutes. And it doesn't <laughs> do just one over end, and it no. slides. Yeah. Radiation anyway, like as soon as he gets out. Like it's he's in a lead lined refrigerator. Yeah, he's but then he gets out fine. and then, the, and then the, it's it's so stupid. It's like there's no that's when you there's no threat, there's no stakes. One thing Can't I he land in a, a truck full of feathers or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a feather warehouse. Yeah. There uh the one thing I thought they could have switched is if he's in the, the nuclear bomb town. Right. Put the rocket sled there. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Fight sequence yeah. there, and he so get out of it. sleds out away right. from the explosion as right. the explosion right. is rolling behind. That's where that should have been. Get rid of the refrigerator. Give right. us the rocket sled there, and give us a reason that he gets from point A to point B, and right. then he has to take that rocket sled out of there because like that it. makes sense that you have a rocket sled in a nuclear test area. That you want people to have an escape if if something happens, and goes right? Wrong, like emergency, yeah. right? Get yeah. the hell out yeah. of there, right? Because that's where that should have been. That's where that set piece should have been. Yeah, yeah. And that's plausible. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah it, it, it just it was just like like the other sequence. I thought it was just very uneven. There are sequences I loved, but like it just it was like up and down. Like it yeah. just it, as that, a whole, as a whole, it didn't really gel. That that know? cold open though, exception of the fridge. I really feel that there's hardly anything wrong with that cold open. I, I didn't mind like the, the double cross of his buddy, Mac. Mm-hmm. What I hated in the film is the double, triple, quadruple Mac thing. Get rid of that. Yeah. That was kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you know, yeah. if, if at a certain point of you know, at the end of the film or towards the, the end of the film where he says, dude, I'm a double agent. I, you know, I was trying to tell you I'm working for the CIA. Leave it alone right there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yes, right. he is a CIA agent. He is trying to get after the Russians. And now you've got Mac and Indy going together. Leave it alone there. Yeah, We yeah, don't need right. more jokes with Mac. We don't need to do more BS with Mac. Leave yeah. it alone there. Again, yeah. there's set element. There, there's pieces of that film I really enjoy. There's pieces of that film I really dislike. Yeah. And I wish they could have, instead of being miles apart, that they could have just brought those yeah. closer. And it, it, it's just... It just felt like you guys just need to tighten your script up a tiny bit, yeah, just a little bit. You know, it's like, and I would have enjoyed it so much more. Now, still, I mean, maybe we'll do a ranking at the end of the show of what we like. But I mean, <laughs> I I still enjoy that film because, again, I'm an indie fan, and so when indie's on the screen, I enjoy indie. There's a lot of silliness I don't like. I don't like nuke in the fridge. I don't like Shia LaBeouf swinging through the trees. I really just don't care for. Kate Blanchett, she, she's a great actress. I love her. She's great in The Aviator. She's great in the Lord of the Rings films. She's great in almost anything she does. You know, Benjamin Button, all that kind of stuff. The characterization in here, and that comes down to script and direction. And yeah. I feel like some of that stuff, I mean, like Temple of Doom, I don't care for as much. I feel like the director wasn't in to that film as much as he could have been. And the same thing with Crystal Skull. I don't think the director was into doing that film, but it was like, that's the film I was handled. So this yeah, is obligated. Right. I'm obligated to direct this. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think no filmmaker ever sets out to make a piece of crap. Of course. You know, they're never right. going, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to do this thing. You always want to make a good, you know, anything that I do, you know, any of the shops I've worked at and stuff like course, that. Yeah. We want to do the best thing that we possibly can do. And we get at the set and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes we have to, instead of this great mechanical thing that we spent weeks doing, we end up tying monofilament line to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, it's like, it, it goes from a $10,000 effect to a, a $2 monofilament line. But Ted, that is absolutely a perfect example of another problem yeah. with Crystal Skull, which is that, the fishing line idea, I think, would have worked better in Crystal Skull because <laughs> there's so much CGI. Yeah, and really there's that's the problem. All the effects is that it cl- nothing feels real. I'm not invested. Wow. This, this film, like with the last two indie films, that's what we're introduced to now with Indiana Jones. Is we still have to compare this to Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah, right. which is I'm going to say ninety. 90- 97% practical effects. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you've got digital elements it's optical, here and there, like right? Optical effects, right? Optical effects. I mean, they've got the the car going over the cliff in Raiders, <laughs> right? You've got the ghosts in the whole opening of, of the arc, right? In the end, but other than that, stunt guys hitting the ground. Those are yeah. you know all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, we get into this, and it's it's not necessarily the fault of the filmmakers. Maybe it's no. the fault of like maybe it's the fault of the audiences sometimes, where it's like. We want more. We need more digital effects. We want bigger, you know, like that. It's kind of like, no, 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 pull it back. I, right. I'd rather, I'd rather see, you know, a chase scene like the desert chase. And I, I know that those are guys on a motorcycle with a sidecar and you're going, Oh crap. I think somebody really got hurt in that stunt. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. does not look, that does not look good. They cut just before that guy died. I think <laughs> Yeah, you, know, right, right. If you watch it in the last film. It's kind of like, that's eh, digital. Nobody yeah, got hurt. Yeah. But, to, but to the it point, to the really point, uh, to the point Ted, of saying that, you know, nobody sets out to make a bad film. I think sure. that might, for me, I think that might be giving Spielberg and Lucas maybe a little too much credit because I remember when Spielberg did an interview about amazing stories before it was coming out and he said, well, it's TV, and that stands for tender vittles. We're giving them tender vittles. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. that's kind of a cynical thing to say yeah, about your own yeah. show. <laughs> and I, I don't, by, by the time of Crystal Skull, he had gone on to, to, he has been quoted as saying that he worked with the cinematographer to step back in the way he used to shoot movies because he wasn't shooting them that way anymore. I don't think right. this was a film he particularly wanted to make. And, and I at a certain feel, point, he obviously gave up caring. I kind of feel, too, that what, any of the Indiana Jones, not the first one, because Indiana Jones, the Raiders Lost Art is right there with Close Encounters, right there with Jaws. As far as a Spielberg film is concerned, he was doing things a certain way at that time. Yes. And I think one of the things that Indiana Jones, I'm not talking Harrison Ford or anything like that, the Indiana Jones franchise suffered from a little bit as it went on is people making these films. Why didn't we get a different director for Last Crusade? Why didn't we get a different writer, you know, for this or that? You know, it's just like, you know, James Bond, they change up their directors quite often. Yes, right. And we get we get Bonds we love and Bonds that are like, eh. but it's, you know, those were, that was okay. It's like, I, I feel like I'd, I would have loved to have seen like, I don't know, like, a, and I think James Mangold did a fine job with the last one, but it's like, it's like, I, I'd love to see like, Maybe a Quentin Tarantino, Indiana Jones, or oh, Christopher sure. Nolan, Indiana Jones, or yeah. you know something like that. Mm. It's like give us something a little. I, you know, the one honestly I would love to see is the Joe Johnston Indiana Jones, who did the Rocketeer. Yeah. Mm. Who did oh yeah. One of my honestly one of my favorite Jurassic Park films is Jurassic Park Three. Mm -hmm. I agree. I yeah. That that's I had a, more fun. That is a, that's Jurassic a better one than, than Jurassic Park Two for sure. Them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I completely Better agree. I, I really enjoy that movie. I mean, hey, right over my shoulder here. One of the reasons I'm a huge fan of this is Joe Johnston's first Avenger. Great, Captain America. great film. Great Turned movie. me into a Captain America fan. Now, my only problem, I know we're not doing the Captain America show really quickly. My only problem with that <sighs> film, uh, Larry, hold on a second. Just, <laughs> just, just, just turn around for a moment. <laughs> My only problem with that film is that they rushed Captain to get to the Avengers. I would have loved you to could have seen, seen a couple World more. Yeah, give me, yeah. Give me two more Captain World War II stories. Yeah, like, yeah. Because I agree. That, and, and again, it's Joe Johnston. And yeah, I think he yeah, understood yeah. that era. I mean, you get the Rocketeer from him, which again, Rocketeer, stupid fun movie. I yeah, love yeah. that film. I enjoy that movie kind of more every time I see it, actually. And I mean, I, it's I got, it's got issues, see, but I like it. Yeah, I'd love to see Joe Johnson doing an Indiana Jones film. Yeah. Because yeah. I think he'd be perfect for it. Well, he would really try. He would know the stakes. He'd put everything yeah. into it. Yeah. yeah. Like I'd, and I'd love to see a Quentin Tarantino Indiana Jones film because he knows Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. And as we've said right. before, they're terrible people. Now, yes. terrible, yes. People. Yes. terrible yeah. people. Terrible people. Terrible, terrible people. So look, you, let's so get to the last one now. Yes. Yeah, so so yes. 2008, we were all kind of disappointed. But still, this idea of Harrison Ford wanting, he, he had been interviewed. Sure, I'd be interested in doing indiana jones again if the right script came along and then i remember when it was announced it was something like i want to say like three years ago 
Yeah. And I'm like, are you ga- – he's going to be 80, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. like, what, what could you possibly do? Yeah. If I look and that so good then, when I'm 80 – Look, yeah, really. I know, I'm right? Fine. Yeah. So yeah. in 2023, we are given Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, directed by a different director. Yeah, yeah. Uh, James go. Mangle. So we've all seen it, and guys, listeners, if you haven't seen it, there's going to be some spoilers. Yes. Here, so. yes. Oh, I haven't seen this one yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's our show. No, 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 no. So, 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 Ted. So Ted, Talk about the rockets here more. Is it as an Indiana that they're Jones all ghosts fan, is amazing. No, no. Uh, as an Indiana Jones fan, what did you think of Dial of Destiny? I enjoyed Dial of Destiny. And again, I've got my ranking of my one to five. Sure. We've got five films. I enjoy Indiana Jones. Um, I really liked the different feel to this film. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like that we got a new director. Yep. Yeah, I like that we got a new director's take on what this character, what this franchise is and or could be. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I, I felt like the his just his lens indie franchise was a little bit different than Spielberg's. Mm-hmm. Now I know you're still in a constraint. You yeah. st- it's still Indiana Jones. You still have to make your audience happy, and I'm sure that's really difficult for any director to have to step in and go. I've got to make an Indiana Jones film. I can't have Indy all of a sudden wearing a different hat and he doesn't wear the jacket anymore. Right. I'm right. going to have him in this. No, he just wears khaki chopper pants with tall. It's, you have to have Indy. So you're, you're constrained by that. But I still think James Mangold did a great job. I agree. He is Indiana Jones. I enjoy it more than Crystal Skull. I like what they were doing with the character that he's aging. It felt like a more grounded and real story to me. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And that's yes. what I kind of liked. And maybe, maybe as a guy who's also getting older, I, yeah. I like, and, and trust me, I'm not an old guy. I'm in my mid fifties, but um, <laughs> oh, uh. I know. No, no, no. Wait, I mean, I'm 38. I'm 38. <laughs> but uh, I liked his take on the character. And I, it felt to me that Harrison Ford, was having more fun playing Indy here than he was in Crystal Skull. Yes. Oh, yeah. I totally yeah. agree I didn't, with you. Yeah. Totally. I didn't feel, it, it, there, there's a little bit more atmosphere to it and all that kind of stuff. I felt the henchmen were a little bit two-dimensional. Yeah, you know? I, like, I like the henchmen. Um, but, no, as bad guys. As bad guys. Just to be clear. Again, yeah. Nazis, you yeah. know. Yeah. I'll yeah. buy that. I'll buy that, and though. I, I, I liked all of Phoebe Waller-Bridge, but her character still was just like, I enjoyed the scene with her as a 12 year old kid, you know, it fleshes out that character a little bit more, but her humanity, it's like, even throughout the film, it's like, she is this, this kind of what people have always accused India of being is a treasure hunter and a grave robber. She truly is a treasure hunter and a grave robber. Yes. Yes. You know, and and it feels like she has no moral compass. Right. And for whatever reason, at the end, we don't really see that change. And I felt that was the one thing that I really had problem with is that she changed, she, she turns on a dime. I feel like even after the, there's the scene where um, they leave the boat after mm-hmm. they've had the dive, which I love that yes. scene too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You put Indy in a different element too. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Indy, Indy scuba diving. This is yeah. cool. Yeah. And this yeah. is some of the stuff like James, you mentioned too, like in the comics and the novels, mm-hmm is put into much different scenarios yeah yeah you know where he's not always just the hat and the whip and the jacket guy he's put into different elements and scenarios i like seeing indy with a jacket and a tie on i like seeing indy having to do something he normally doesn't do which is like deep sea diving you right. know something like yeah. that or or you know it's funny even in the beginning the cold open where he's like dressed as a nazi again you know yeah. where <laughs> to me what are nazis me, that's Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of nostalgic for me too because one of my favorite Harrison Ford films is Force Ten from Navarone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. From the Nazi he puts on, and we also get so the Nazi colonel in Force Ten mm-hmm. that they end up killing, and he's in the car, and they do the little Hall Hitler, and he's dead, mm-hmm. and they push him over the cliff. 
Mm-hmm. He's the same Nazi that's in the tank that they push over the cliff. Oh, oh nice. Oh, that's nice. Cool. Two films. That's, two that's films. Great. Harrison Ford pushes the same guy over that's the great. cliff. Oh. That's great. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I digress. So uh, I, uh, I, I, I yeah. agree with you about the Helena character. It was a major problem for me. I never found her sympathetic. I, no. I really didn't like it's not Phoebe Waller Bridge's fault. It was the way that she was no. written and portrayed. It bugged the shit out of me. And I liked her a lot in the film, though. I still like her. Yeah. You know, as much as we talk about Kate Capshaw, she's fine in Temple of Doom. Mm-hmm. I don't like the character. Right. She plays the character fine. Yeah. You know, the same with Helena. She plays the character fine. Well, I think they were you know, kind of like almost going, she was in a way like an adversary. You know, yeah. all the way yeah. Th- yeah. for a lot like, of it through, and you're kind of wondering, you know. But I didn't mind her. I mean, yeah, it is. I guess when you when you say that, it is kind of a bit of a turn for the end. But I guess after what they go through, it's like okay, you know. But that didn't bother me yeah. that much because I because she is is a good actress and she's interesting and and I like yeah. them together. I found it really intriguing when she when she's doing her dialogue, and I didn't really like her, James, because I thought she, oh, what do you do? But it, I found her intriguing. You know, I I, re- I thought. I love Phoebe Waller Bridge. I love Fleabag. I, I'm a big fan of hers. And I loved her in this movie. And yeah, I know that there's an abrupt change, but I don't really think it's that abrupt because as you're following there's, her path throughout the movie, you see little hints of. Ah, uh, you're right. It's, it's, it's reflected in her you're relationship right, with the kid. That's and, right. And so you right. start to see, you know, little. She does care about somebody. Conscious. Yeah. yeah. No, so no, starting, no, yeah, but to that. It's starting to bubble up, but wait a minute. But here's my thing. James has a thing about characters that like, I just didn't find her likable. Well, so she's interesting. No, no, no. It's more than it's more than likable. It's it's her motivation. It's what drives her, her place in the plot. And I okay, she she's got gambling debts. So this whole thing is moved because she wants to sell stuff at an auction because no, that's bullshit for me. That's not enough. And, people and, people and, wanting to people trying to make a lot of money to get out of a debt is it, bullshit. It, it's bullshit to me. <laughs> Let me introduce you to a few because, people. She's a major, <laughs> why I'm doing <laughs> this with you guys. I mean, after I get paid for doing this, guys, as, we're getting paid for this, right? As, 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 yeah. yeah. Ted, checks Ted's checks getting, in the mail. Ted's no, getting just, a McDonald's yeah, yeah. gift certificate and a monster party face mask. <laughs> I, I could not. Her motivation as a character was so ill-conceived to me that it threw me out often in the movie. And, and to your point about the kid, as soon as the kid gets lost and gets like kidnapped and they're in the cave together toward the end, there's a moment where she's smiling. And it's like, dude, you just saw Antonio Banderas get shot. The kid has been kidnapped, and there's this moment where you're like, oh, we're in a cave. This is cool. It's like, oh, fuck you. She's we're, a little heartless. Well, yeah. But, here's, but she heartless. is heartless. That's the character. That's but, but look, the character, but look yeah. guys, guys, guys. Hey, yeah. I'm not in any way going to say that this is a perfect script. I yeah. had my issues with this movie, too. And first of all, I will say, cut 20, 25 minutes out of it. Because yeah. there are action sequences that go way too long uh, and I think if you trimmed up her stuff, it would be a little more powerful. And I think you'd I like more. You could have trimmed up the uh, the beginning as well. I yes. Think a little bit I, 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 wait, I, I but, didn't like But didn't wait, wait a minute. Beginning. But wait a minute. For me, going into this movie, thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe they're going to go to this well again. And he's 80. <laughs> and you yeah, know, yeah. your ageism joke here. I felt that this film was the closest in tone to the first movie than any of right. the other ones. I, I felt agree it had a, a seriousness to it that felt no, I'm genuine. Stop you. Yes, I do agree with the fact that, yes, in tone, I feel this is closest to Raiders of the Lost Ark. And it just, you know, honestly, like seeing all of the uh, the press that Harrison Ford has been doing, mm-hmm. clearly his heart was in this film. Yeah. More than any of the others going from Raiders, you know, going from mm-hmm. Temple of Doom on through those yeah. those middle three. You now, can feel it. Again, an actor, I don't think, takes a job going, I'm going to phone this one in. Yeah. I right. think yeah. He, he enjoys the character. He's always said he enjoys the character. I, you know, that he would play it as many times as he could, you know, schedules permitting and whatever right. like that. Right. So I think no matter what, he's enjoyed the character. I think he had a lot of fun playing this and it shows on camera. Yeah, it really does. Um, I also feel that this recent film did a good job 
in utilizing the fact that he is an older person now. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything Retiring. they didn't try to just continue on making him an action guy, even right. though the way he's pulled paid. in right. Yeah. The way he's pulled into this adventure is believable. Feels very me. realistic. Right. Yeah. And, right. and feels natural. And I, and I, I think there's people, some wonderful acting, especially yeah. in the first half of the film. I've heard some folks complaining about like Sala showing up and it's like he owned his own archaeological dig company and he was a renowned person and now mm-hmm. he's a taxi driver and it's like he's an old man right and he was yeah. going through war they explained this that there was a war and right. indy sponsored sala yeah. and his wife and his grandchildren to come to the united yeah. states that's true and, yeah know, i can't tell you how many cabs i've been into or ubers or limo drivers over the last 35 years in the film industry that i talked to and they go, oh yeah, I, I came from, you know, wherever. I'm, I'm, I'm from Ukraine. I'm from Russia. I'm right? from yeah. this and that. I was like, a surgeon. Oh, I was a surgeon. Right. I was an yeah, engineer. Yeah. I was this and, and that. No, and the, and the very last scene, you know, we talk about beautiful fan service where you've got Marion, Sala, uh, and Indy there together. Oh, uh, I, I, I brought a tear to my eye. I, yeah, I, I got, just yeah. same here. Me too. Bobby, I Me too. got tear. I got tears in my eye. It's just I will, the, what I will they did. Got, what they did was magical to me. I yeah. did not expect that. I did not know that that was going to happen. Nicely and handled. Way, and yeah, way, yeah. I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm getting a little emotional talking about okay, it right now because it, <laughs> it, it kind of it's it starting with Raiders and going through this. You know, wherever they went, and then, you know, how we feel about uh, Crystal Skull and whatnot. Like a but that long moment, long. but this moment at the end was so powerful, so heartfelt to me that I did, I for the got hat my the tears, yeah. the tears yeah. welled up, and I started to just you know, this tear up a bit. It's, and it's, I thought that was yeah. beautiful. Like you said, it's on the tone and the respect given to the character and the story because right. i also i also thought that there's never an action sequence that i thought was like that's stupid that's too much i thought they handled yeah. that really well i love the idea of the time travel i, I thought it could have been done if they were not done right it could have been like ah no, it's I, like, no. Right. But they, I thought they did that really there were well moments where i got nervous i was like oh no yeah. are they gonna do <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right, exactly right. and they, they they kept they, they just up, kept it like, right oh, shit, they're really gonna do it I got I got nervous many times in the film. The, the one thing I hated in the beginning, and I'm so glad they paid it off, is and, and I, I hate it when they do this in so many films where they set us up in the Lost Ark for Indy and Marion to be together. So we didn't get that payoff. What, mm-hmm. Thirty years, yeah, something yeah. like that. That's until, true. Like, Crystal Skull, yeah. and it's like finally he gets Marion back. They get married. Now, in the beginning of Destiny, divorced. And I'm like, yeah. come on, don't do this. Just find a reason. And it's like, same with Shia LaBeouf. As, many, as much as people will give that character shit, it's years later, change the character. I, I, I'm sure he's changed as a person. If you really feel that the role of Mutt or Henry III should be in the film, recast the role and put them in there. I don't have a problem with that. Recasting. I mean, again, how many bonds have we had? You know, mm-hmm. how many, you know, different, uh, you know, we've had two Dumbledores and Harry Potter. We've had, you know, whatever. It's like, Parents. Oh, it's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can, you can recast and people can handle it. You know, it's just like, oh no, it's like, are they seriously going to ditch Marion? Are we not going to get Marion? This is sad. Right. I right. thought they handled it really well with what happened with Mutt. Yes. It that was yes. powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. powerful. Well, well, the, 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 there's the yeah, the, the time when he talks about what he would tell his son. Yes, you know, yes. that yeah. is a great moment. I yeah, and it's, agree. The yeah. film when they're they're panning through his apartment. Yeah, picture in the background. There's a folded American flag. I went, Mutt's dead. Uh, yeah, I did yeah. notice yeah. that. I did. I, I saw it right away, and I leaned over to my wife, and I went, Mutt's dead. And she went, mm. How do you know? And I said, There's a folded American flag, and he's a serviceman. You can see that he's a marine. Yeah. No, it was it was handled it was handled really well, and I thought, yeah. and I also, and it was low key. It was very low key. Well, it's also it's also the impetus for his relationship with Marion falling apart. Right. Yeah, that, right. and so that works really that. well, and it's real Me too. That's a real beat because she yeah. was. I thought I thought Karen Allen for the most part was kind of wasted in Crystal Skull. I mean, yeah. she just yeah. it was nice to see her back, but she yes, just, you know, right. there wasn't yeah. much really to do with her. 
I think in Crystal Skull, though, it's not like she had nothing to do. You know, when she showed up, it, it wasn't like she was like a little wallflower. She wasn't Willie Scott. You know, no. she still was like, she was still kind of like tough Marion. You know, but so again, it's not, it wasn't read the like, Darabont script, the, the dialogue in the Darabont script between the, the two was marvelous. Script, she had a lot to do. She had a lot yeah. to do in that script. That's a shame. It, it's too bad they didn't yeah, make yeah. that. But read the script that, several times. There's an opening in the Darabont script. If you read it, it's brilliant. Indy getting older. It, it, it's such a great scene. I can see it in my head. I can see it being shot. But anyhow, mm-hmm. we're talking about Dial of Destiny. But um, the, you know, the, the payoff to me was Marion walking through the door at the end. Yeah. And again, even after this big, they traveled through time. I mean, yeah. 2,000 years in the past. Yeah. And it's like, can they come back from this? And the fact that, oh, it does, it still feels grounded. It feels mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. yes, this could happen. And but talk about feeling nervous. I thought he was going to stay in the past. I thought, yeah. I thought he was going to, there again. He wanted, I thought discovery, how it was going to end. Yeah. Like, oh, here's, what I, like, here's what I thought was going to happen. Cause it was, it was going in my head as I'm watching it. I'm going, Indy's going to stay and somehow or another, they're going to heal him. We're going to see Helena get back using the dial to get back. We see Archimedes building the dial. Mm-hmm. And I thought Indy's going to use that dial to get back. Oh, right. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, I thought, I, I Helena's thought going to show yeah. up and yeah. all of a sudden she's going to show up and she's going to go. I can't believe we left Indy there and he's going to be standing there and he's going to go, I helped Archimedes out. If there was no consideration of the butterfly effect, then he could have gone <laughs> to Vietnam and rescued the kid, you know, and then showed yeah. up with him at the end. You See, know, that, I was fair. thinking oh, that, James. I was thinking I, that. Why, <laughs> yeah. why not thought, fix everything? Right, right. I thought, I mean, I thought too, of, that sh- yeah, Charlotte Buff would show up at the end, well, too. Like, you know, hey, Dad. You know, in yeah. that effect, you know, he could have gone back to pre-World War II and just killed Hitler when he was... Yeah, that's right. true. That's right. true. Right. Find one of those, and you know, he could have just found the lost ark really easily. So. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm like a regular Joe watching this. I I'm not able to think that fast like you guys. Going, oh man, I I, I think this is gonna have. I just kind of let the ark. Yeah, he was just sitting me. there going, colors, sounds. <laughs> no, come on, a regular Joe. No, I hey, I as, as this was happening, Ted. I didn't know where it was going to go. Like Sean, I did think, I, I think it's going to lean towards he's going to stay in the past, but I didn't think he was going to survive. And I, then, was, I was nervous and then, and then, several and then, times. And then you yeah, had that yeah. powerful moment. You had that powerful moment where uh, Helena just makes that decision. Yeah. And I think that was a big turning point for her. Yeah. And I yeah. loved where it yeah. went. I'm, I was actually so happy and pleasantly surprised. And I really, really enjoyed this one and also too, Larry. And I, guess, I just want i just wanted to shout out to mads mickelson he's yeah. a great villain he's, great. he's, he's done so many he's he's, he's a he's great so good and he's, he's so in good. a very yeah. in a very special way you yeah. know it's, and toby it, jones it, i love toby, toby jones. jones he's in jones everything but he's night. so great yeah he's he so is. i would have liked to have he, seen him used a little bit more yeah you know, yeah and, and you again know, I, from Captain America. Yes, I know. Yeah, exactly. I, right, right, I know. Right, I know. Right, yeah. But Hail but Hydra. Still, look, <laughs> you you had mentioned it before. Maybe it's not a perfect film, but you know what? I'm really happy with this. I kind of feel if this is the yeah. swan song, it's not a bad one to go out no, on. No, I, 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 I did okay, enjoy it. So a lot. Guys, I'll ask the question. You know, we've talked about all five. If we had to rank the five, where are we? So my number five is Crystal Skull. Yes, that is mine yep. as well. Sean. Yep. That's tough because I did enjoy it more than I thought I would when I watched it again. But Sean, Crystal Skull. Yeah, I guess if I have to choose, yeah. James, did you do your number five? Yeah, it was Crystal Skull. Yeah. My my number five is Temple of Doom. Hmm. Ah, wow. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Matt. I'm, I'm sorry. That's no. That's fine. That's all right. That's okay. okay. <laughs> so number four. My number four is Temple of Doom. Okay. Mine too. Yeah, okay. I think mine too. Temple of Doom. Okay, uh, Temple of Doom. Ted. Crystal Skull is number four. I'm Last Crusade for four. So, Ted, do you want to go first? My my number three is yes. um, Isle of Destiny. Okay. Oh, okay. Mine, mine is Last Crusade. Yeah, yeah, mine, mine too. M- mine too. Uh, my Matt. number three would be Temple of Doom. You know what? I'm, okay. I'm going to do something I didn't expect myself to do. I'm changing my number three to Ooh. Last Crusade. Ooh, you heard it here, folks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So fair enough. My number two is Dial of Destiny. 
Same here. My number two. Same yeah. Here. I, I, man, Same my here. turn. We're Same in agreement. Number one, everybody we'll say it all together. Our number one is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hey, uh, Larry, 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 I want to point something out too because I believe I believe it was on a, some show a couple shows back. We were talking about the new Indiana Jones coming out. And I don't know if you remember this because you seem to remember everything with a photographic memory. Anything that pisses you off for, on, on these shows. <laughs> but I said, I said to you, we we're talking about, I go, I said something like very sarcastic, like, yeah, I can't wait till the new one. I'm sure it's going to be great. And you're make you're like giving me gruff about it. And I totally take back my words now because the last thing I expected was Dial of Destiny to be as good as it as it was. I really just didn't think I kind of lost it. hope. And like I mean, yep. all this all, all the other sequels have just too many issues. Yes. And the the, the, the age that Harrison Ford was and in this age of everything digital, I thought there's no way I'm gonna have a satisfying Indiana Jones movie. And I was proven wrong. So well, I, I'm Sean, it here. Sean, no, uh, I just, I just I want to say, no, Sean, another... no, I just, Sean, I just want to say, I'm sorry for being so nasty. Maybe I was, I didn't, <laughs> no, Sean, you no, weren't no, really. Sean, you're... I was being sensitive because I, look, I respect your opinion a lot, Sean. And I, I just wanted you to give it a chance and I, because yeah, I yeah. was hopeful. I was hopeful. I'm glad it was, but you were right. You know, and, and Sean, it's true, Sean. We have been disappointed, buddy. Yes, yes, look, yeah, yeah. look at the Star Wars films, you know, and, yeah, and I yeah, agree with yeah. you about those. We we have all this hope, and then you see them. You're ah, oh, there, there's really? so, there's so many big football. there's so many big franchises. Yeah. Whether it's like Terminator, Jurassic Park, yeah. that, that have so many ups and downs, and like there's yeah. so many issues. So I don't, that's why, yeah. Yeah, so I don't, yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame yeah. you. I guess I was sensitive about it, but I'm I'm glad for all of us that and, okay, and, I, I know. I, I know we've moved on from Dial of Destiny, but if I can dial it back for a minute. Oh, <laughs> nice. As a, as a Greek-American, I, I had some issues. Now, I love Antonio <laughs> Banderas. I love Antonio Banderas. But if they're going to go to Athens, and this is the first time you see Indy going to Athens in the movies, mm-hmm. like, why did he have to be a, his, a Spanish fisherman? I thought I he was Greek. He, no, he's he's described as a Spanish, Spanish fisherman, right? and I know Banderas is Spanish, but he could have played a Greek, and I think yeah. he'd be hard hard pressed to find a Spanish fisherman in Greece. <laughs> You're right. I, you know what? It, the film is now number five for me because <laughs> but, it's uh, racist uh, against it's, Greeks. But much <clears throat> much bigger than this is that they get to Archimedes and they're having a conversation with Archimedes, and they're having a conversation with him in Greek, and it would have been ancient Greek. It would have been a completely different language. Ah, and, interesting. And they know that because they know that, but that's but that's not what they were speaking. They were speaking modern Greek, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, even oh, even, wow. even in the episode, oh. even in the episode, <laughs> wow. even, James, even, I've got to say, this for us average Joes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I will. I will reference. I will reference the Kathy Lee Crosby episode of Kolchak the Night Stalker. Where ah. she was speaking ancient Greek, and it was pointed out. And really? I was impressed that, right. they, that they know nice. that they knew the difference. Nice. And here it's like <clears throat> the cinematographer of Dial of Destiny is a Greek man. Wouldn't if he had said, "Guys, self-hating Greek." The wrong Greek. Anyway, you know, James, I, I you, you got. Me, Dial of Destiny is number six to me. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I, yeah, I put it behind anyway. the uh, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. <laughs> I, 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 I put it behind. I put it behind High Road to China. Now, I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's I, I past Lassiter. Myself. <laughs> I would not have forgiven myself if I did not go on that rant. So, thank uh, you. Wow. I, thanks for ruining the movie for us. <laughs> hey, uh, I think we have to mention too. I'm mean, look. For all the issues we have with like digital technology, holy shit, I have never seen a more realistic make a actor look younger uh, yeah, effects. I mean, I mean, we're, we're talking about great. like, I mean, lingering shots. He's in good. flashlights being shined in his face. And like, yes. like it's, it is Pretty perfect. Good. I mean, yes. it was perfect, but it was his acting came through too. It was like, I was more watching it. Not as wow, That's a young Harrison Ford. I was watching like, that's a young Indiana Jones. It's, it's like a lost, uh, you know, adventure of Indiana Jones. We never got to see yeah. from back in the eighties. Like it's, it's just amazing. Okay. I want your opinions. Okay. How do you guys feel about Indy being recast and showing more adventures from the 1930s, 1940s? You mean what doing you... Do with Harrison Ford with nope. the digital effects? Nope. Or, oh, just just, just, just doing more, more actor. Re- recast the role. Now, mm-hmm. try it. I have my opinion. I say try well, it. Right now, I'm, I, 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 I own 
too soon poster every action figure every magazine book that has come out i have got a room key for a hotel in las vegas that says indiana jones and the crystal skull (laughs) popcorn bags from you know like i i collect indiana jones i've got damn near everything and i'm a harrison ford fan to the end i want to see more indiana jones i would love to see the role recast I think the danger is of that is that unlike the Star Wars franchise, we have so many other characters and robots and, and ships and all this stuff. If it's going to be more movies, which are going to be throwbacks to the old cliffhanger serials, will people go for that? Like, like you well, know what I mean? It's because it, it, that's, that's what the original Raiders. That's all, I think that's, that's all my it problem. was. Is it is it still relevant? You know, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, I don't know how well the film is doing. I haven't researched how well the new Dial of Destiny is doing. I. I've heard it's underperforming from what, and it's really? every film is always going to underperform because, you know, yeah. producers want to make more money. Yeah. So yeah. of course it's never going to make enough money. And it, but, it was a big, but it was like 295 million, I think. Wow. 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 It's a, well, it's a I, huge budget. I say go for it because we've had how many different James Bonds? We've had how many different yeah. Doctor Who's? Mm. I mean, why not? Why not try it? And yeah, I mean, it's a role that I, absolutely identify it's Harrison Ford. I mean, they're almost interchangeable, but I would say if you get the right person, it'd be some very tricky casting because you You got to get it just right. I I know it's hard to say. I've got, I've got like a few people I'd love to see play the role, but is there one person that each one of you guys, can you pick somebody else? I can't because it's just, no, 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 because it's Harrison Ford. Ted, you've you've asked a question. You've posed it to us. For me, for me personally, I remember when Tobey Maguire was playing Spider-Man and then when he stopped and they got the new Spider-Man, I, yeah, Andrew Garfield, I felt that it was too soon. I'm like, really? You couldn't have Maguire again? I thought he could still do the role. And then Mm -hmm. he comes back and does, I'm just saying he came back and did the role later. My point is, if you were to do something like that now, I would have this feeling like I I don't want to see it right now. It's too soon. I I, I was 80 years old. You gave us like a 40-year-old Indiana Jones. That's not like, we're not picking another 80-year-old guy to play Indiana Jones. It's it's a really (laughs) different character. You're seeing him in the 1930s again, 1940s. He clearly had multiple adventures. Get an unknown. I think it would be an unknown. Look, with technology now, with that whole opening where they de-age him, if it gets, okay, I know it was extremely expensive and difficult, but if we have the technology to do that, my first thought was, hey, let's go back and make a bunch more Indiana Jones movie and de-age him in all those movies. Well, would actually, you, what you, you could do is see... you, maybe if you do AI, that's the new big thing. Are we going to get to a point like maybe in the next five years they go, yeah, you yeah. know what? All we need is the Harrison Ford estate to sign off on this. We're going to create a, di- a digital oh, thing. And, you know, you have an actor do the role, I, but, but I'd have rather the, see his the character. Face. I'd I'm rather just, see the character, you know, because I enjoy yeah. like I enjoy Daniel Craig as much as I enjoy Sean Connery, as much as I enjoy Pierce Brosnan, because it's it's the same character, but it's a different guy's take on it. But right. it's still the same character. Now, if you still give the guy the hat, give the guy the jacket and the whip and they they still have to play the character a little bit, yeah. you know, and their take on it. There's people out there that can clearly do it. Is Chris Pratt the guy? No, I don't want to see Chris Pratt. Do no, it. Somebody no. did a great yeah. Photoshop of him years ago. He looked fine. He's great as Star Lord. Mm. You know, yeah, now, he, he now, works fine in yeah. Guardians films. I don't want to see him do it. I know yeah. Bradley Cooper's been thrown out there. I think Bradley mm. Cooper would probably be fine. Yeah. The one I'd li- actually like to see do it if they want to do it. Well, two. One is Colin Farrell. Hmm. Oh, wow. interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other one is Chris Pine. Also interesting. Sure. Maybe he could and be. I, yeah, I, maybe. I think I, I'd have fun watching both of those guys in like the 1930s. Yeah. You but know, would that be it, enough hook though? Would that be enough hook for audiences today to go see a bunch of movies set in the 1930s? Like I just and don't know. And, that, I, and I think that's the only problem. That's me. That's me yeah, saying yeah. I want to see more of this character. But again, it's like, you know, we've talked, you know, there's an Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. Oh, we have right. to talk you know, about that. Is, what a fun is ride. That ride. It's a fun ride. It's really cool. But people that go on their ride that are kids going, what's Indiana Jones? What is this? Right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is it even relevant? You know, 
Yeah, like yeah. Tony, okay, it's, a, there... it's a tougher. Yeah, it's a tougher kind of. Maybe that's maybe that has to do with, like you said, Ted. If, if the movie is underperforming, the new one, it's weird. It's a little more kind of condensed of a peel, I guess. I don't know. It's just yeah. like we again, all saw Raiders at a perfect period in our lives where yes. we were still coming mm-hmm. off of watching black and white. Flash that's right. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, you know, right. getting all that kind of stuff. So it's like you know, again, like I, I keep saying, we had three channels growing up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. It was relevant to us. It yeah. worked for us. We grew up watching Clint Eastwood and right. all that kind of stuff, gritty westerns and all that kind of stuff. So Raiders worked for us. Yeah, we get the and references. As as the touchstones yeah. were there. So yeah, we, we understand it. Uh, audiences these days, I don't think get it. No. Yeah. A couple of those people I mentioned, you know, that I think might be able to be good playing the role, but it, again, how big do the explosions have to be? How yeah. big do the action sequences have to be? How much more science fiction do we have to put into it right. to draw an audience into it anymore? Yeah, I want to see more indie for myself, but you know, I'd go see it. Crispin Glover. <laughs> <laughs> he hit well, the nail know, on the head right there. We mentioned uh, John, Great John, Scott. Will- John Williams <laughs> earlier, and I just want to throw out that no matter the quality of all the sequels, you can't fault the music. It's no. been consistent and it really is wonderful. right, and, and it's and so, actually, yeah. <clears throat> Temple of Doom music. Yes, I, yeah. I really love, and I mean, uh, last all of them. Well, you know, Crystal Skull is a little bit forgettable. Yeah, as far as the yeah. score is concerned. Yeah, there's yeah. the Raiders March. You know that theme and, that goes and, through, and, the, and yeah. the theme for Kate Blanchett. But there, there isn't anything yeah. else that's. Uh, my very favorite Williams composition ever is Marion's theme. From indie, I absolutely. Yeah. And love I, I love that it brought it back at the end of yes. this yeah. one. So perfect. No, and of course, it was. beautiful. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's regardless of what happens with the franchise. I mean, till the day I die, I will be able to watch the original Raiders. I'll watch yeah. it a hundred more times over, before I over die. And over. I yeah. saw yeah, that when the, it first came out in '81. When I was, I don't know how old I was. I think I was a. I might have been a freshman in high school. I saw that. And it was big for the time. I saw that nine times in the theater. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Remember when you used to see movies? In yeah. the I know, right? Yeah. Multiple yeah. times. Do you know, I know. nine know times I, in the theater? Do you know what I've like, always yeah. wondered, though, with the success of Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, how many kids went out and said, I want to be an archaeologist because I want yeah, to get into yeah. this action. And you get into it and go, boy, this is really freaking boring. You know, there's a lot of – because most well, of yeah. the – the funny thing is in archaeology, you know, I I have a nephew who he's, – he's not necessarily an archaeologist, but he's, he does – the digging for for he things in digs. Mexico. Well, you know, it's it's <laughs> okay. like I uh, no no it, it's, it's like archaeology. It's it's like archaeology. You know, how many yeah. Nazis but, did you kill? But, but, but yeah, but the funny thing is, is uh, you know, it's not really the most exciting thing. But I will say this: What do you think happened to the sales of whips? After that <laughs> yeah. first film. Because guys, my younger brother, God bless him, he he got a whip and damn, huh? he practiced the thing. He was great at it. And I remember trying to do it and it hit me in the face, you know. And <laughs> and but I don't know how many of you guys got like a real leather whip. But my younger well, brother got... was really good and he he actually got together with a friend and named how many of us did this? He got, got together with a friend and the did. Wall behind me. Yeah, he went out and they they made their own little Indiana Jones film where it was a little thing where you had to grab a little idol and stuff, and it was wonderful. It was really great. I've got a I've got a Super Eight film that I did with my buddy where I played uh, Indiana Jones. Of no course, no way. All right, and uh, <clears throat> um, actually, I sent Larry. I texted you a picture the other day. Oh yeah, we saw that yes, picture. Yeah, yeah. yes, it's, I sent it. But but sixteen uh, years old. But did Indy. did you? But so. Ted, have you practiced your whip? Do you really know how to use it? It's our neighbor across the street. She asked me, she goes, I just wanted to try it. I said, hold on a second. I went up to the shop here and I got, <laughs> I've got two whips. One's made by David Morgan, who made the whips for Raiders. Wow. 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 So, you know, David Morgan. And I know that before David passed away, he was still making whips. I know I have a whip that was actually made by David Morgan. Wow. Fantastic. And then my other whip that I've got was made by Joe Strain, who made the, all the whips for Crystal Skull. Oh, and wow. That's a cool. Beautiful whip. They're both nice. uh, 10 foot whips, and I can crack the crap out of those whips. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. so cool. See, my, my whips were made by Madam Lucy's House of Discipline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's still going pretty strong. <laughs> now, Ted, Ted, I do have to ask. I know that Crystal Skull is my least favorite, but 
did you have anything to do with that film? Yes. Yes, indeed, I did have something to do with that. I, it, it's nice. so funny. The things that I forget that I worked on. <laughs> is, right. um, you know, what did after, you do? after being in the industry for so long, it's like, oh, yeah, I did work with that actor. I did work on that film. Um, but, uh, yeah, I worked at Stan Winston's studio on uh, Crystal Skull, and we built the crystal skeletons oh awesome i really wow. like that i love those are, I love those those. are beautiful i love the Dude, skull it, too the skull is awesome yeah the skull that part's great amazing and we had all of these acrylic you know they were rotocast at the shop they were designed by a guy at the shop he's still at legacy effects his name is scott Patton, and scott designed the crystal skull wow, and skeleton wow. and so you know all of those things were 3d printed and so my contribution to the show and they knew what a huge indie fan i was they tried so hard scott did a friend of mine he tried so hard to get me on set for shooting um because actually we did two things on that show we did the alien body that they oh, find in the right oh yeah no that's yeah. beautiful that's cool so we did that alien body and then we did the all the crystal skeletons so we did make like 13 crystal skeletons that's and awesome skulls and so I sat there in the shop for weeks and we would sand with like 1300 grit sandpaper. No. Wet sand. Wow. You know, <laughs> to a fine polish oh. so that they could all be positioned on their chairs and what. Nice. Um, That's not, it must've been um, a thrill wow. for you though, to be working. Yeah. It, dude, I can't tell you. I remember John Rosengrant brought me into the office and they all knew what a stupid fan nerd <laughs> you know i own three different indie jackets i own three different indie hats i have another indie hat ordered from herbert johnson who is the original maker of the hat wow. my gosh the, the whips i have three different pairs of alden shoes that indie wore you know throughout all of the <laughs> i dude i i've spent way wow. too much money on indiana jones crap so <laughs> of, knew, of all John the, of all the... yeah go ahead sorry no, of all the toys, Ted, would, do you have like a favorite product? The thing I love about new films coming out all the time is that we get new action figures. Yeah. I've got the original ones yeah. I got when I was a kid. I've got my Raiders and Temple of Doom action figures that I still have that I had when I was a kid. Matt, you showed yours off at the beginning of the show. I still got mine. Nice. And every stupid little thing that I found, you know, along the way, lobby cards, um, wow. behind the scenes movie posters i've got a a quad poster from france for last crusade wow, wow. It, this <laughs> big, my, my my aunt got it for me she went to france oh. so it's last crusade all in french that great drew struzan poster from last crusade wow you know it's just like so it's like every little thing that i could collect nice. i collect you know if it's an indie thing i get it if it's I, not everything, there's some stuff that I go, yeah, I'll do a pass on that. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some Funko stuff that I did, or sure. you know, if, I, if I find it, you know, mm. there's the new the new Hasbro figures that are coming out are just <laughs> holy crap. I really love my Indiana Jones whips. Well, uh, <laughs> I bet those, you do. Those are my favorite toys. I, I <laughs> those are amazing, made by the guys that made them for the film. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. what about what about real toys though, like well, little. Matt? My favorite toy, my favorite Indiana Jones toy, it came out, I want to say, I don't know exactly when, I want to say like early 2000s, but it was, you guys can tell me when this thing came out. It's a 12 inch action figure and you press a button on it and there's a little rubber mouth on Indy and he will actually say lines from the movie and it's his voice. It's it's Harrison Ford's voice. Has and you never press heard this button it. and the mouth moves. I'm telling you, I'm in Target and I'm looking at this thing. And of course, there's always another guy of our age who's looking <laughs> at stuff. Right. But he comes over, I'm holding this, and he's like, they never get the face right. <laughs> and, I, and I just and I wanted to turn to him and say, why don't you shut up and go away? <laughs> you know what? Maybe they didn't get the face right, but they got the voice right. It's Harrison yeah. Ford, you idiot. <laughs> this is a beautiful figure it's fox and i love this thing and they did another there's another one too there's a one where he doesn't have the leather jacket on and it's like a sweaty shirt and that please, one he please can, send he me can, a picture of this i will yeah i got both of them and the <clears> other one he can um like smack the whip 
And mm. cool, in, in, cool. This, in this same series, you got the Swordsman mm. from Raiders. Mm. Okay. And mm. I'm trying to remember what the other ones were. I think it might have been those three, but I'm not sure. But I'm telling you, if you don't have this figure, you need to have it. Because oh. anytime you got a little rubber mouth that speaks, come on. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> That's awesome. Well, aren't there like new, they're newer, is it NECA or kind of like NECA type figures now that are really nice? Nice kind of yeah, like Ted's holding one up. This I mean, is, this oh, is that's nice. Hasbro, they're, they're nice. Um, oh, that's nice. Wonderful. What do they call these? Um, Hasbro Pulse. You know, yeah, Hasbro they're kind of kind of like figures. NECA in a way. Yeah, yeah holy like, crap, the detail on these. See, yeah, those I right. love. Those I like to get. You know, because those and are cool. It's like well, and of course, you know, you've got to have a Nazi to go. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, I just that. noticed like his lapel pin that's up there. Yeah. Yeah. Not Plastic on it. You this have to paint tops. it on yourself if you want it. This is tote. Oh, yeah, yeah tote, that's tote, what they tote, right. sure, sure, sure. But man, these these new so cool. figures are just bananas perfect. Yeah. And the, the thing I love, like what comes with tote, is you get two pieces of the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, cool. Oh. Oh. Put together. Indy, you get two pieces for the top of the Ark. No. So of course those those bastards at Hasbro yeah. make you collect five figures so you can build of course. the, yeah, build the right. course, you know, But that's what I would want to do. I'd want to get I'm all a the big figures. fan, so of course, you know, and it's like, you know, the, the boxes are nice. Look at yeah. awesome. uh, you very know, nice. For you people at home, as Larry would say, I'm holding up a box. This is great radio. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, everybody has seen these things. They're at Target and Walmart. And stuff. Yeah, they're like cool. That. The boxes are beautiful and you know, it, it, and that's the thing I love about these films and, and everything just being, you know, we're all toy collectors. We're all, you know, if I'm not making a prop for myself or 3D printing it myself, I just got off the 3D printer. I, I've, I've got, there's a, a guy that modeled the Dial of Destiny. Oh, and it's a really? beautiful nice. model. Cool. Very good. I just pulled off the printer this morning. It was a 24 hour build. Of the oh first part gosh. of the dial. Wow. wow. And it's so that'd be like, cool to have that'd be cool to have the main artifact yeah. from each film. You know, yeah. Yeah. Art, the yeah. Skull, yeah. 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 destiny, like all lined my, up. That. My Ark of the Covenant of uh prizes will be actually building an Ark of the Covenant. Oh, so nice. when I've nice. got some time next year, I do want to start building an Ark. You know, okay, awesome. for the, for the next, mo- next monster palooza, buddy. Yeah. 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 Do I have to foam fabricate it? <laughs> hey, Sean, Sean and James, do you guys have uh, Raiders uh, or Indiana yeah, Jones? I, you know, I never really got the figures when they came out because I was I was older. So, but then now, now the new oh. one, like the one that that, that yeah, Ted was just showing, really cool. Now I want to get those. Now, now I, I have the, the quarter scale. The shelf behind me. Quarter scale NECA Indy is gorgeous. I, I do have that, and it comes with a okay. little scale fertility idol. Now I did nice. uh, back in the day. I did get the official hat. I still have it. I love it. And I, and I want to share this real quick. I was waiting online in Times Square for the Temple of Doom on opening night. Long, long line. And uh, NBC is covering it for like the Today Show. And Al Roker is walking <laughs> back and forth. And he's got the hat on. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's cool. Al Roker's getting into the spirit. Ever since then, every Thanksgiving parade, every time I've seen him out, he's wearing the fedora. That's funny. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's we true. Do. Yeah, I've seen that too on him. We do have a, a nice replica of the idol from the first film. That because cool. I yeah, like a really nice replica, you know, those, that those, was those floated around for a good chunk of, I was working at K and B effects group way back mm-hmm. when they opened up the ride at Disneyland, the uh, the Indiana Jones adventure ride. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys remember in town in, in LA, it was the Mark and Brian show, the radio show. Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so Mark and Brian gave away ten thousand tickets. And it was the wow. opening night and it, they closed the park. So this was after hours right. and the entire park was open and you could go. And so if you called into the show and did some stupid thing or whatever like that, they'd give you a few tickets. Hmm. So I called in and I, they said, well, you got something stupid to do. And I said, no, but I've got a huge bribe. <laughs> and they're like, well, I don't know if we can take a bribe. And I said, well, you know, it, it's really cool. And I work in an effect shop and they're like, uh, we don't we can't take bribes let's like you know but we're glad you're a fan and you know thanks for listening and calling in and then i was about ready to hang up and i hear somebody go don't hang up the guys want to hear what you've got <laughs> at the time we had all gotten to idols mm-hmm. we, we had a mold and we were vacuum metalizing them and all that kind of stuff and then i think it was mark thompson got on the phone with me and he goes what oh, do yeah. you have man 
<laughs> and I said, I said, I work at KMB. And he goes, I know KMB because they were in the one of the Jason movies. All they right. had the cameo roles. They both played security guards. They got killed in a Jason movie. And they oh, said, okay. We know KMB. I said, yeah, I worked there. And I said, we have idols. <laughs> and we're metalizing them and they're gold and they're beautiful and all this kind of stuff. And I said, you know, I'd be happy to make one of those for each one of you guys. And I said, he goes, how many tickets do you need? And I said, well, I said, we need 12. Oh, wow. Like, Holy shit. He goes, I don't know if I can give you 12. And I said, that's kind of what we need. And he goes, it sounds like it's worth it. Are you sure you're going to get these to us? And I said, I'll get them to you. I bumped into those guys that night and they were like running away from an event, you know, that, that night at the, at the park, we got our tickets and I said, Brian, Brian, or no, it was Mark is Mark Thompson. I said, Mark, 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 uh, we, we got to get going. We got to get going. I said, from KMB effects group, I'm the guy that called the show. And he goes, wait, what? And I pulled <laughs> out of my backpack and I had made like sacks with them and drawstrings. And oh, man. And there was, there was hemp inside and everything like that. And I said, I got something for you guys. And he goes, holy shit, do you really? And he opened it up and the gold idol, he goes, you were the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's, cool. how, that's how we got in. A whole bunch of us guys from KMB got in that night and oh, rode the ride awesome. for the first time. So <laughs> that that's was cool. great. What an awesome ride, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, Ted, you didn't get a chance to go on the set for uh, Crystal Skull. but I did not, you, yeah. But, but you did eventually get to meet Harrison Ford. Is that true? Well, not even eventually. It was way before that. Oh. So I worked at Stan Winston Studio on Crystal Skull. So this is years and years later. So years before that, I'm working at KMB FX Group and I get sent to set on Air Force One. Oh, okay. Do, wow. do the, all the body measurements and all this kind of stuff on Gary Oldman. Mm. Spoiler alert, Gary Oldman's character is really bad and gets killed really good at the end of that film. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do his broken neck head at KMB for that film and the body. And at the time I was the body guy. So I go to set and I do all the body measurements on Gary Oldman. I do all the photographs of his head, his hands, all this kind of stuff, his body to make sure that we're replicating him really well. Gary Oldman, number one, beautiful guy. Couldn't have met a nicer guy in the world until I'm standing outside Gary Oldman's trailer talking with him, talking with the makeup artist who introduced me to Gary and we're doing all this stuff and this close to me and I'm, I'm showing about a foot distance. This hand comes in, grabs me on my right shoulder and this guy comes in on my left and he goes, what the hell's going on here with you guys? <laughs> we're all sitting here talking. I look to my left and about 10 inches from my face is Harrison <laughs> he's, he's dressed like the president from the film his eyes are skew oh he's my got god blood on his lip he's wow. got a cut on his brow oh, that's oh. awesome guys i can't tell you what it took for me to simply just be professional yeah really i'm oh, sure oh, i, I turned it. to my left and I, I just kind of smiled and laughed <laughs> what's going on here he says gary oldman very nice and very britishly says Oh, this is Ted. He's from the effects group that's doing uh, the body for me for the end of the film when I get pulled out of the plane. And he turns towards me and he goes, what's the name? And I said, Ted. He goes, I'm Harry. He said, good to meet you. And I shook his hand and he walks away with Gary Oldman. He goes, hey, I want to talk to you about something. He and Gary will walk away. And I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it wow, was, that's you awesome. Know, awesome. Worked with some great people, but holy crap. I mean. Yeah. I got to turn to my left and see Indiana Jones, Han Solo, and everybody else. And I'm working that's on amazing. Air Force One. So it's like, yeah, wow. that's pretty amazing. That's oh, great. So that's incredible. It's, it's one of those things every time I watch Air Force One and I see the end, and Gary Oldman goes, <laughs> 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 I forgot God I worked on this. <laughs> that's great. That's Just the, awesome. le the <laughs> legacy of these films and that character. I mean, the fact that you had, you know, there was that fan film that those guys did where <laughs> they took what, like uh, 20 years or something to make this fan film. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There was, 
What was it? I, I know one of those guys. Raiders. Really? I think it's called Chris, Raiders, Chris the greatest film or something like that. The greatest or... fan film ever made. Or where, where they yeah. did it like shot for shot. Is that the one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Okay. I think I've seen that. Yeah. And it's Warded surprisingly it. good. Yeah. 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 yeah it is. One of those kids is named Chris Strompolis. He's a Greek American kid. And I knew him uh, <laughs> like 15 years ago. We we hung out and he said, oh. All the know, Greeks I've, know I've, each I've, other, right? Yeah. We're all related, you know. Like, wow, that's cool. Wow, that's that's cool. How was Telly? How was Telly Savalas as a person? You know, I I never met Telly, but, but his but his brother was in my living room back in New York. Of really? he was. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's I, I recommend anybody who's a huge indie fan watch that film. Well, they they have never released the film. I'm not. I don't know where you can find it or buy it or get it. You know, probably conventions. Right. But there's a documentary documentary mm, right? Yeah, because the last yeah. part of that film that they couldn't make was the exploding flying wing. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. I think they did a Kickstarter or something like that to build the flying wing. And, and they do it. That scene. Mm. And, and holy it's shit, they almost fantastic. Kill a guy and, yeah. Mm. It's the, the documentary is great. And it's just like, it pays tribute to the, the spirit of India and everything that we saw when we were kids, when we watched Raiders in 81. You know, right. I made my own fan film in 80, you know, in a little after 81, like probably 84, 85, you know, when I was 16, you know, nowhere near like, you know, I think it was like maybe six minutes long we did on Super 8. <laughs> but man, it, watch, watch this documentary because the passion that these guys had and it's the passion that seeing Raiders, that's what it's like. If Star Wars didn't make me believe that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Raiders just cemented that, right? Because right. It, it is that perfect film. Yeah, it's, it's that you know, beat for beat, scene for scene. You know, every actor in the film, the the dialogue, it's neck and neck with Star Wars. This is what made me want to do what I do now. Yeah, you know, is just create, make things, work on films, work on whatever, just create things for the masses for people to see because. Man, it just it influenced me so much. I think you that's know, the power it, of those movies. It's like yeah. Yeah. you know they it's it's like cinematic alchemy. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it, it just 100%. it just happens. And it and like you're right, that's maybe one of the greatest legacies of all these original films. Of, extra, of, like you know of of Spielberg and Lucas and Harrison Ford and Lawrence Kasdan. It's that perfect film. You just yeah. there's very few films that are perfect films, right? Yes. You know, like and it, I, I really feel that Raiders is one of those. And it's just, I can pick apart any one of the other four films of things I like or dislike. Yeah. But it's because of that first film of Raiders that kind of excuses anything else. Mm. I can pick it apart and hate this and hate that. But because of Raiders, there's parts I love in all of those films. You know, and it's like, you no matter what, I see Harrison Ford throw on that hat. And he's got that whip. Doesn't matter. It's 1981 again. Right. And I'm watching it's it a magical Indiana Jones time. film. Yeah. And that's, yeah. That's all I need. And if it weren't for Indiana Jones, in a lot of ways, if you think about it, we would not have met you. No. We'd not have you that's in our true. lives. You wouldn't have yeah, exactly. gone down the road of the path of your bliss. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us, right? Yeah. 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 And, and no, Ted, I, I just want to say, Ted, thank you so much for yeah. being with us. This uh, is awesome. And just it sharing is. your passion and to go through all the films with us. I mean, Indiana Jones is he's an iconic character. And I'm so glad it was the same guy playing him, you know, in, yeah. in these yeah. films. And I'm so excited about this latest film. I'm happy yeah. that it turned out the way it did. Yeah, I'm like and, relieved uh, and happy that it actually turned yes. out to be a pretty damn good <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. 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 There's, that. There's, there's there's films that you can watch and pick apart and just go, eh, this or that, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like there, there's this thing that cements this character that it's just like, eh, I'm a fan, you know. I just <laughs> I, <laughs> although I do have to say, at the end of this latest film, I was really hoping. That Samuel L. Jackson was going to come in after the credits <laughs> and say, I'm, I'm putting together a team of really old a team. genre action stars. And so it's we're going to be get gonna Indiana defend. Jones, yeah. Picard, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> fill in the blank. Indiana, yeah, right, right. Indiana Jones, Rocketeer. The Rocketeer. You can get Wolverine from World War II. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. which right. by which by the way, James Mangold directed two Wolverine films yeah. too. And two, two, love, two of the good Logan. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you you've also got um, who else could you you could throw well, in yeah. Brad Pitt from Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Sure. <laughs> what a World War II film would you have with yes. Logan? Wow. Uh, that yeah. would be that would be, that would be that'd be yes, that'd be quite a World come War II film. Hey, and then Picard here. would come from the yes. future. Yeah, so, and, so, and, 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 sure. and throw, yes. throw in some Picard. Why not? And, and Ted, Ted, just <laughs> out of curiosity. So I know you had this big move, but you're still working in the effects world. Is there anything oh, yeah. that you're working on that you could let that you can talk about? Know no, that my, it, my, my wife and I, it, it, you know, good friends of ours know that we, we, uh, we made a move and we're setting up our new shop. It's in a different city. We used to be in Burbank. Now we're in the, the central coast of California, but we're just a few hours away from Los Angeles. So we're still working really hard. We're finishing oh. up a huge contract that we had with PlayStation for a couple of years. We built multiple costumes for nice. PlayStation uh, uh, properties, um, Char- for characters, and Char- yeah. character properties. So we did Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn and Sackboy and Astrobot and Ratchet and Clank and there's others, you know. And so we we built all these amazing characters. So we started that in our shop in Burbank, and then we just finished that up in our shop in Central Coast here. Then last year, we also worked on the, the Boots Riley TV show that just came out on Amazon Prime called I'm a Virgo. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. We were, we were graciously asked by uh, the company ADI, Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated. Tom Woodruff and Alec Gillis ran that shop. Um, oh, wow. That, that shop has since closed its doors. Tom and Alec ha- are doing their own things right now. But um, ADI was in business for 35 years and did amazing films. And uh, they were super busy. They were able to do like a couple of huge effects for I'm a Virgo. But then they subcontracted to us all of these half scale figures for Mm. I'm a Virgo. If anybody's watching the show or going to watch the show, it's a story about a character that grows 13 feet tall. He's this giant of a guy. And so there's moments in the show where they're shooting over his shoulder down to the actual actors. That's a 12 foot tall puppet that. ADI built. Wow. wow. Now when they're sh- when they're shooting over the shoulder of the little of the, the normal people at the, mm-hmm. the the 13 foot tall, 12 foot tall actor, those are the puppets that I built in my shop. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Nice. That was that was myself and my wife Lolona, nice. um, Jasper yeah. Anderson, Alana Suin, Peter Luong, who am I forgetting? You know, we had a very small group. David Woodruff worked on it as well. So a very small group of people built 13 of these characters you know nice. we, we scanned people 3d printed the molds wow um, you know, i love that um, it's like physical i love that there's you know i mean i'm guessing that could have been done cgi or digital but like i no, love that and, they're and not they could have done it like green screen and all this stuff yeah Luke yeah Riley is really interesting the way he does his stuff and loves practical effects loves in right. camera effects right so all of our, our half scale figures were these silicone skins that were beautifully painted and you know, punched hair into all this. So I'm wow. a Virgo is on right now. And then, uh, um, so that's something that we worked on last year. We're finishing up this PlayStation thing. And next year, what I'm hoping for is you guys have always seen me at Monster Palooza doing my mm. foam fabber stuff. Yes. On yes. Instagram yeah. on the foam fabber on Instagram. And I'm hoping next year in 2024 to start doing online classes. Oh, you know, cool. Wow. Ooh, nice. Patreon thing or something like that. That's where I cool. Do like live tutorials and live teaching. I'm going to keep up my Instagram. You know, now that we're finished with this PlayStation project, I'll be posting more about that. You know, I've been posting a lot of older stuff from like, you know, that I did at KB and Legacy Effects and Stan Winston Studio. And they've all been really great in letting me post all this stuff. And uh, so now I'm going to be able to start posting my new stuff, you know, like I did. That's my- awesome. For Monster Palooza, where I had my zombie figure and I had my angry fish guy, which is my take on the uh, creature from the Black Lagoon. And yeah, yeah. He's, I he's, still, kind of... he's still for sale, right? He's still for sale. He's, st- he's still for sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everything is for sale. Yeah, I did my I did my uh, deep sea diver helmet the, yeah. last year too. That was so oh, that was great. Doing. I love yeah. that work. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I kind of look at that as like it's my hobby. You know, I, I get these. Mm. You right. know, we're trying to go after like some commercials and some 
film work. I just, I had a nice phone meeting with somebody yesterday for something I can't talk about, Mm, but it's like, Oh, I've been wanting to do this for years. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) please, I can, I hope this, I hope this works. So it's like, I'm still doing film work, but you know, this foam fab work that I do, like the, you know, my angry fish guy and my Frankenstein metal of the mutant and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of my hobby and it's how we started out working Mm -hmm. doing creature effects and stuff like that so it's the best. that's really fun to do and i you know it's it's fun i've got some young people that i mean like 13 14 years old that are like going wow how do i how do i do this <laughs> how do that's i get so started? cool that's so yeah. cool to get that. so it's like yeah why not why not start teaching people i mean i did a lot yeah. of stan winston tutorials as well with the uh, stan winston school and those guys are great to work with but um now that i'm out on my own i have to try to figure out how to do this for for me you know, yeah, well, yeah. Ted, and your work is absolutely amazing we love, yes, we love your it. stuff and i'm so excited to hear about there's other things that you'll be working on in the future oh, yeah, so yes so many people say oh you moved out of la are you retired and it's like <laughs> <laughs> i'm 55 years old and have been a special effects artist in film there's no if, way i can retire at 55 if, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, right. if, Indiana, if indiana jones is still fighting no, no, no. In his I'll 80s. Be 80 years old, cracking the whip in That's my right. shop, making there monsters. You go. That's right. Yep. Go well, go Ted. find the Nazis in the Central Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Find them. So, Ted, I want to thank you so much That's for a, being uh, with us on our journey. Do a toast. To yeah. Yeah. Yes. What do you say we do a toast, guys? Hold on, hold on a second. I got to open yeah. my... Uh, there you go. I've been, Pour I, yourself I, a hopefully fresh I one. Haven't, Hopefully I haven't been speeching my slur too much tonight. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But guys, what do you say? We give a toast to, first of all, Ted Haynes and to Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah, definitely. Da, 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 da. Ford, Steven Spielberg. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. James Mangold, George Lucas. Here, here. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. This comes from this comes from our friend and longtime listener, Percasso the Mundane. Oh, yes. Percasso. Oh, that's his that's his handle. And he said something that he labeled for <laughs> for James. Uh, uh, apparently he, he listened to the last episode and it's a, it's a trifold brochure uh, that says, are you just not that into sci-fi? <laughs> sci-fi is okay. And so are you. <laughs> you enjoy genre films, TV shows and books, but sci-fi leaves you feeling meh. <laughs> do, your, do your friends and family hand you box sets of Star Trek telling you to just give it a chance? <laughs> Does the prospect of reading Clark, Asimov, or Dick sound like homework to you? <laughs> do you do you like Kubrick as a director but think 2001 is a dull, sleep-inducing, overblown spectacle? <laughs> if you answered yes to any of these questions, you might be an N-I-S-F-I. Not into sci-fi. And you are not alone. There are many genre fans who just aren't into sci-fi, leading perfectly acceptable normal lives. You may may even know some and don't yet know it. Here at the James Gonis Foundation for genre fans who think sci-fi is just okay, we are working to change the stigma around these fans. We want you to know that you can hold your head up high at the next con, even if you don't care about who the next Doctor Who will be. <laughs> we, we treat your beliefs with dignity and compassion. We want you to remember, sci-fi is okay. I'm okay. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's pretty That's hilarious. Awesome. Wow. Well, wow. And, it, and it even has contact information. Like <laughs> yeah, it does. It's, 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 we'll try uh, to we'll uh, put it up on Facebook. It's like this actual brochure. It's hilarious. <laughs> James, wow. James, you have to start this center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, that well, was I'm, I, beautiful. I don't I don't need to defend myself anymore. Now I have this. So, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. This is awesome. Well, thank I you. Love, right? We appreciate that very much. That was great. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and let's take a moment to remind all our listeners that Monster Party merch is available on our oh, eBay the merch. store. The merch. You can get uh, T-shirts. You can get shot glasses. You can get PPE face masks. And, of course, the legendary Monster Party cap. 
And you don't need to go on an archaeological dig to find these things. All you have to do is go on our eBay store, which is easy to remember, Monster Party store. And if you happen to be a Patreon member and buy Monster Party merch, we will throw in free goodies courtesy of Jason Lindsay and Biff Bang Pow Toys and creature creator extraordinaire Ted Haynes. Remember him? Oh, he's oh, great. Yeah. That name rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we need? We need to sell whips. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah, monster, really. party whip. monster party whip. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I don't know. So what? What is this? <laughs> what is this Patreon I keep hearing about? You know, <laughs> I just, I, yeah, I feel like I, I'm an 80 year year old uh, archaeologist who's just sort of beginning to lose his memory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> uh, Patreon is like a giant rolling ball headed right for you. <laughs> But instead of trying to run away from it, run <laughs> into it. Yes, because when you do, all of a sudden, you will be introduced to this world of Monster Party bonus material. We're talking about the special episodes that we do, audio episodes. We have our shows like Monster Party Masterpieces, Larry's Toy Time, Sean's Toy Time, James's Toy Time. I mean, we have so much material. We have these story collections that are provided to us by my stepfather-in-law, John Bordeaux who puts together these collections of vintage sci-fi. We have our trip to Japan, where you can join us virtually mm. as we walk through Japan and experience it in all its glory. So mm. that is what you get when you join Patreon. Well, it sounds amazing. But and after this episode, I've got a whole list of these like Hasbro Indiana Jones toys to buy. Uh, I don't yeah, think I'm going to have too. money left for anything else. Well, let's just say that you're looking to get Sheila LaBeouf's autograph, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking, what does that cost? What, like five bucks? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, but then you're thinking that seems like a lot, though. That's a lot of money for his autograph. What else could I spend this on? Well, you could take that money and you could join Monster Party's Patreon because it's five dollars a month. That's wow. that's crazy. You can't get a plastic alien skull for that little and a crystal skull for uh, oh, five dollars. No, no. That's true. yeah. Well, that's that's a deal. Uh, how does one join? Well, all you have to do is you go to patreon.com, you go to monster party, you click the join button, you follow the instructions, and next thing you know, you're skipping down the street like an 80-year-old with a whip. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very cool. Well, hey, let's also remind our listeners that we are on the social media of Destiny. Uh, we are on nice. the Facebook at Monster <laughs> Facebook at Monster Party TV, Twitter at Monster Party HQ, Instagram also Mon Monster Party HQ, and YouTube at Monster Party TV. And uh, hey, we'd love to hear from you. If you can take a moment, send us your thoughts, write a review, and we will read it on the air. And we'll maybe even turn it into a brochure that can maybe help James. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong. <laughs> and watch anything with Indiana Jones. Whether you like it or not. And if you come across the Ark of the Covenant, just keep it closed. <laughs> Ted. Nice. Larry wanted to say something wow. to you. Yes. Oh, you got I, your whip now. Yes, he's got his whip. And you know, he and he and his wife, I mean, they've they've dressed up, you know, we, in a little Mary. Hey, up. you know what? Whatever you need to do. I understand. <laughs> I've been married for a while. You gotta keep it fresh. <laughs> of course. You, you don't have a we, whip like that. You're not no, Mr. no, no, no. Well, we do Farscape. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't have. What is this? Being is being recorded. Got it. Okay. Yes, you can record it. <laughs> so, Ted, who did, who does your wife dress up as? You know, we did. Uh, we did a cosplay. You guys, are, are you hearing me? Okay, with I've got the. I can hear in. you. Yes. Okay. No. Cool. No, we did a thing when we got married six years ago. Um, <clears throat> we did a photo shoot of films or TV that I really liked, and film and TV that she really liked. So we did an Indian Marion 
photo shoot. And then we had all these pictures at our wedding. Oh, cool. Um, so we did an Indian Marion. We did a Han and Leia. We oh. did um, one of my wife's favorite TV shows that she'll put on is the Golden Girls. So, <laughs> you went as B. Arthur? Girl, were you? I was B. Arthur. Okay. <laughs> nice. The, the looker, of course. <laughs> yeah. And then what else did we do? We did another. Oh, we did I Love Lucy. We did the uh, chocolate line, wrapping the chocolates. Oh, nice. <clears throat> right. So we both had on the, the stuff, and I'll send you pictures. That's awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. I you know, love Ted, Ted, with your beard, you could actually do Henry Jones, too. <laughs> I know. It's like, you know, it, it's it's at that point where it's like, no. I'm so glad that they made more indie films after Last Crusade. Are you? <laughs> well, yes. no, it, well, for, for reasons, but it was like, I'm, I'm getting older. Harrison Ford oh, yeah. was in Last Crusade. Now I'm kind of like older. Had they not made more indie films? And I'm like, what am I like, you know, 55, 60, 65, trying to do like 45-year-old Indiana Jones? It doesn't work, <laughs> but it's like, Oh crap! I'm going to get to the age where I have to play Sean Connery now. <laughs> and, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, Ted, is uh, Matt? Are you noticing his audio is going dropping in and out? Yes, I was noticing that, but it seems to be okay. Is it a mic thing? Or are you maybe? Uh, I wonder if it's when he's turning his head or something. I don't yeah. know. Or is do it, you have a or sensitive it, mic or? Um, also, or do you that, have headphones? Or do you? Are you wearing uh, earbuds? I've got earbuds in. You got earbuds. So, okay, we'll try it though. It sounds okay. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll work with it. If there's a problem, yeah, yeah. we'll stop down for a second and figure it out. Yeah. Because that's how good we are. That's right. Damn On straight. the fly, <laughs> always coming up with answers, just like Indy. That's <laughs> right. Exactly. 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 I'm, making, I'm making this up as I go. I'm more like <laughs> Mutt. Oh. You're more of a Mutt? I'm more like Mutt. <laughs> What's that? Uh, one and done? His son, right? Wasn't yeah. it Mutt or yeah. Mug? Or- yes, yeah. Mutt Williams. Yeah, Guy LaBeouf. Yeah, I'm, I'm more like him. A lot yeah. of people don't like boy. me. Uh, well, I made that a, is I true. Made a- yeah. <laughs> You're we'll, Mr. We'll- bad Boy. <laughs> yeah, they- right. You know, that's <laughs> sometimes say- I eat carbs after midnight. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> you know, uh, the Monster Party team, he he is a bit of the bad guy. He's a bit yeah, of the bad guy. He's yeah, that leather jacket. Let me let me urinate on the cement wall out there. That's yeah, I, that's, yeah, that's me. That's me. That's, that's absolutely me. That's I, I'm your not definition even, of I'm a bad guy. I'm not even the Fonzie of the group. I'm wow. Squiggy. There you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who also wears a leather jacket, I might add. Thank you very, very much. Sure. Wow. You, you know what? You'll there get you this kind of hard hitting trivia only from Monster Party. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank God. Well, Ted, we're so glad that you could be with us. Tonight. Well, thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, this is cool. This is man. I've got to say, our printer took a shit. I was going to print out so much crap I had. Uh. And now I've got to, like, oh, man, I can't remember anything. So, oh, well, we'll, we'll see what happens. I went to go print. And I went, why aren't we printing? Why can't we print? And my wife was like, it hasn't been printing for like three weeks. And it's like, I didn't know that. So Uh-oh. oh well. <laughs> I had internet you know, trouble right before we came on. So yeah, but you one have, of those things. Ted, you have so much knowledge in your head. You know, I'm sure you know this is we're gonna roll. You know, we're gonna roll. <laughs> and and speaking of rolling, I just wanted to ask as far Uh-oh. as like a like a guideline for tonight. Are we gonna no guys, personal we, attacks? No. Well, um, that's so, not so there are so we can do who's that directed attacks, at right? <laughs> who's that directed no, no, at no 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 it's more like i thought i thought we'd start about when we start this the the genesis of this character and just kind of go kind of well, yeah i didn't think you were going to go a free for all like like no of course and, we're going to talk we're not just going to go okay go indiana <laughs> jones random thoughts anyone no we're going to talk about we're going to talk <laughs> about what the character who the character is how it came about well yeah maybe we'll how, how do you like this larry we'll do it in chronological order yes yeah you, within with uh, I'll within just say reason the, within the film Wait, parameters Corona- okay. exactly so temple of doom first and then raiders <laughs> oh that's <laughs> true. oh no chronologically <laughs> yes don't give right. me that shit ted don't oh, give me your see, see, oh, see what which, i tell which, you about uh, the personal okay. attacks which, which i have an issue which i i want to discuss that too because i have an issue with that the fact that yes, he, went we all all, he went There's all through that all over the place. Doom, and then he's Raiders. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about that. You know, but, just because uh, you've got that leather jacket on, buddy, don't think that, you know. <laughs> Wait, he suddenly turned on you. <laughs> no, Larry, how about just be nice to our guest and let's get hey, going. Look, I don't know if all you guys, I think you'd know that we moved. So oh, okay. It, it's the James Gonis thing, you know. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna but, um, s- just lay it on you as a surprise. So no, we, we I think we, we moved to uh, Morro Bay, uh, so we're about three hours north. Oh, and so the space I'm in right now is my uh, my mother in law's uh, garage that I turned into my own shop. Oh, cool! And then nice. my and she we're gonna be leveling this, putting in a, a the same size as the one that we had down in Burbank, plus another shop behind it here that's going to be my wife's shop. So I'll have the front shop that I can do all the dirty crap in. She's going to have the back shop that she can do all of the uh, sewing and clean stuff. I think a road trip is in store once, <laughs> once this thing yeah. is done. Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Like, I'm getting my Harrison Ford out. I'm getting my finger out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so what eventually will be above me is going to be this much storage and this much really kick-ass bar that we're going to build. Yay! It's going oh, to cool. be a huge fucking bar that we're going to deck out with all kinds of stuff that we've already kind of started. Is it like a know, theme just, to it, kind of? It's it. We want to do like kind of a old speakeasy-ish type stuff, but we've nice. got so much flat art, you know, like yeah, I've got film posters. My wife has got some really great artwork, but not just that. We started collecting like it's been our thing. We say it's our anniversary gift, but then it feels like we've only had six wedding anniversaries, but we have bought enough flat art to go for 20 anniversaries. <laughs> so we right. like, we're, no more posters or anything like that. It's like, okay, we want to buy original stuff, mm. you know? So, um, there's a guy, and I'm not sure if you guys know, um, Craig Davison. It's a mm. UK artist. He does these beautiful paintings, um, where it's like a, kind of a shadowy silhouette whether it be like a maximus from gladiator or something like that and then there'll be a little kid in front of them pretending to be oh that. that's cool and that's he cute did all of, he did all of the bonds you know so he's got <laughs> um he, he did a daniel craig you know standing there with a the gun and there's a little <laughs> kid in the foreground just all you know doing his best bond and that one's called no tim to die <laughs> and then there's another one called uh, there's another one called Thunder Paul. And we, That's a great idea. Beautiful That's artwork. Funny. And so I, I reached out to him and said, "Hey, do you do commissions?" And I, he was, "What are you thinking about?" And luckily, he was following me, so he knew me and I knew his stuff. And he said, uh, "What are you guys thinking about?" And I said, "Well, here's a picture of my wife and I from our wedding, and it's the Indiana Jones thing that we had shot, and." Uh, I said, it'd be fun. Have you ever done like an indie with like the little kid indie in the front, you know, with like just a goofy hat on and like his mom's purse and, you know, holding like a, a, a plastic, you know, ray gun or something like that and trying to be indie. And he uh, like waited a little bit and he texts back. He had already started one. Ah. And it's, <laughs> it's Indian Marion in the background. And in the foreground, two kids pretending to be Indian Marion, dressed up with toy snakes around them. It's almost <laughs> identical to the picture that we had taken for our wedding. Wow! And I literally got goosebumps. I'm like, holy shit, man, that's amazing. <clears throat> that's that's he great. only just started it. He had kind of put it away. He said, ah, "I'm trying to figure out some stuff with it." And, <laughs> but he just, he just. So we've got that. Um, there's a couple of like a, um, a Terry Wolfinger uh, painting. I think I'm going to get. Um, you know, stuff like that. So that's what we want to deck the bar out in. Thick ass cool. props and things like that. And at my old house, I used to have like my indie jacket, my hat, the whip, all that stuff it was just on a coat hook inside the front door. So nice. you know, stuff like that's that. That's great. That's yeah. great. We're gonna we're gonna do the padded door, the leather padded door from uh, M's office and Bond and wow. you know, stuff like hey, that. Hey, and it, have when, been known to partake get, in cocktails. Well, and and when you guys, when we get that done, it'd be cool if you guys wanted to do a monster party from up here. We do it. Sure. The there we go. Awesome. You know, road trip. Road Let's trip. Let's do it. Up yeah, there. Really I mean, cool. right, right now, and it's beautiful. Like every, for the last like month or so, we're socked in with fog in the morning and it clears mm. and then it starts coming back in around like three or four o'clock. Right now, visibility outside is like 200 yards. And it's just <laughs> this fog that comes across Morro Bay. Wow. You know, I'm just expecting a ship to come out of it. And like, yeah. <laughs> all, all I, could hear, I could just hear like a John Carpenter score at about four o'clock. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yeah. Take care. 
We're all heading over to Ted Haynes's house. Oh. Is that is that your best, uh, Adrian Barbeau? That is my best, Adrian Barbeau. That's as good was, as it gets. I, I thought she was here for a second. It was crazy. I know. Isn't it amazing? Well, I am that, the Fred Travelina of Adrian Barbeau. Uh, uh, this is this is great. This is really yeah. Awesome. It is great, Larry. I, you know, God forbid I say well, something is, and we I have was, a good time. I was waiting for him to go. Well, this has been great, and it's like wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm no, about no. to say that. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this is wonderful. Uh, but we have so much to talk about. Yes, you know, we do. A That's certain true. amount of time. <laughs> yes. By the way, Matt, what, what officially are we calling this? Is just, is just Indiana, just Indiana Jones. Jones. Okay, okay. With Ted Haynes, yes. Cool. our guest. Yes. Indiana. Exclamation Jones. point. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Shall we start it? Yes. Everybody ready? So, Ted, you know how the game is played, basically. We're going to introduce ourselves. Matt does the creepy voice. And then, you know, we're going to say what the title is. Then we're going to introduce you. And then we're going to go to town. Okay? So I'll keep my mouth shut until I'm introduced. This is great, though. This is awesome. Uh, Ted, you're doing great. You having fun, Ted? You having fun? You know, it's so funny. It's like I, your, your guys, your voices are all so familiar. <laughs> and, every, and every time I listen to the show, uh, you're talking back to just the podcast I'm listening to. Right. And it's so weird to interact. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually talking. That's cool. Uh, start, start, start again. Cause you're, oh, did I, go. did I bobble again? No, 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 like, no. Like the first couple of words sometimes when you start are like dropped out for some reason. So I, so I we why. heard like, we heard like, blah, blah, blah. Agree with you, Matt. Like it's weird. Okay. Well, that's usually how I start out talking is I agree with you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no good, matter what. Good, good I man. Never start start out, I, 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 never start. Going, I agree with you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All that subliminal work is finally paying it, off. It, it works. Um, I listen to the podcast every two weeks and I say, yes, I agree with you, Matt. Agree with so me. Let, let, agree let, with me. Let, agree with let's me. Let's start fresh. Let's start All right, fresh. Sorry, here we go. Here we go. Ted. <laughs> 